Welcome to Caressel Stadium in beautiful Defiance, Ohio. This is the Campus Nation Game of the Week with the Bluffton Beavers at the Defiance College Yellow Jackets. I'm joined by Doug Edwards and Al Matthews, and I am Bill the Razor Rayback. And a uh, great day for football. Gorgeous day. What beautiful weather. Couldn't ask for better weather. And, um, and an, an interesting matchup. This game is for the Hammer. The hammer. The hammer that they play for. And um, the this is the 99th meeting between these two schools. Going back to, I think, uh, 1914 is when the first game was played. And Bluffton has a slight advantage in the series, 49-47 with two ties. So, um, you know, we have two teams that are both on the rise in the Heartland Conference. Um Despite the fact that Defiance came off a, uh, a 78-54 defeat, it marked the second consecutive game that the Yellow Jackets were able to score 50 points. And then when we look at Bluffton, Bluffton has won three games under second-year coach um, uh, Matt Nardo. Matt Nardo. And so, Doug, um, there's significant reasons why both of these teams, besides the hammer, why both of them want to win. I'll let you take it from there. All right. Well, last time out, uh, the, the Yellow Jackets, the Defiance, they, uh, they got into a show, shootout with Rose Holman, uh, and they lost here at, at home 78-54. to 54, But uh, it was a, a record-setting performance. It's the most points scored in a Defiance football game ever. And um, it also set um, the second time – in two weeks that they had actually scored over 50. So two weeks in a row they had scored over 50 points. Right, so, right. Uh, and that was, I think, the first time that had ever happened in right, the program. Right. So, you know, the uh, game I was at earlier in the season with uh, Mount St. Joseph, you know, they they, they got hammered, but, uh, you know, and they, they got beat pretty good. But they are on the rise. When you're scoring 50 points a game, you got to be doing something right. So I think they've been making some positive – yeah, uh, gains. And I think when we talk about defiance, when we look at the schedule, they've not won a, a home game here yet this year. But when we look at the teams they played, they opened with Mount Union, who is ranked second in the nation. They're nine and zero. Mount St. Joseph, who you just talked about, is eight and one. Franklin at four and five is the low water mark, and Rose Holman is seven and two. I believe we uh, we added that up. It's twenty eight and eight is the total. Uh, combined record of the teams they've lost to this year. Right, so I think they're they're hoping that the, looking at this situation where they're playing a team that's uh, three and six, that they actually can get to five and five. Yeah, and 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 leave the conference because they are leaving the conference after this year. Right, but leave the conference on an even note at least, and not a, a losing record. And this would be only the uh, the first time since 2016 that they would be able to accomplish that five and five record, and I think. Uh, with Bluffton, Bluffton is at three and six. If they win, obviously that'd be their fourth win after coming off a two and eight season last year. Double but that's going to give them the same record as Defiance, right. right? And I think that's going to be the motivation. Defiance is looking at five and five, and they don't want to have the same record as Bluffton. They want to win this game. Yeah, so, so it, it, it's probably going to be a, a tough battle today. I, and uh, when we look at the two teams, uh, they kind of have similar defensive uh, capabilities. Yeah. Um, though uh, offensively, the philosophy seems to be a little bit different with Bluffton tending to be more of a, uh, an aerial team and more uh, and defines more of a ground game. Right. And when, when we talk about Bluffton uh, and the aerial game, they are led by – uh, Xavier Rayo, and he is a 5'11", 215-pound senior, and he has thrown at this point of the season, we've got his stats right here, 
He has thrown for 1,958 yards and 21 touchdowns. And he distributes the ball very well between his three wide receivers, uh, number three, C.J. Thompson, number seven, Ethan Berenger, and number one, Nigel Payne. Each of them have at least 35 receptions on the season. So we kind of know what we're going to see out of Bluffton coming in right. into this offensively. Uh, what about Defiance, Doug? Uh, Defiance, they come in and we have um, – they are led by um, – Jordan Ambrose, number nine, he's a 6'2", 228-pound senior out of Texas, and uh, he's coming off a, a game where he scored, was that four touchdowns? Four touchdowns, right? yep. So so he scored four, and, and again, the program had a 54 points, even a losing effort, but uh, obviously having a great to- uh, time in terms of moving the ball last game. And then we have Tayshawn. Uh, Freeman, the running back, number zero. Uh, again, he's a senior, 237-pound, uh, six, uh, six-foot-tall um, from Macon, Georgia, and he is about to um, – he's had 109 yards rushing. He has 12 touchdowns, He's tied, uh, which are tied for the fourth most in a single season here at Defiance, and he has the possibility of moving into – third place and it has a chance an outside chance i have to have a good game but he can he could go over a thousand yards this year yeah he would need to get 191 yards today to be able to become a thousand yard rusher which i'm sure as a senior he would he would relish the opportunity oh, yeah. to do that so uh we're gonna see a little bit of a different philosophy from defiance uh not that defiance won't throw because we know that ambrose can throw but we're going to see the running of ambrose and Freeman is what uh, Bluffton's going to have to, to take care of. Right. Now, taking a look, talking about the Bluffton defense, um, you know, they're le- the, the, the player that stands out like a sore thumb is number eight, Marvis McWright, the 5'11", 260-pound senior. Uh, Marvis has 30 total tackles, but, Doug, out of that 30 total tackles, he has 11 TFLs. He has four and a half sacks and one interception as a defensive end. So he's going to be somebody that, you know, Defiance is going to have to pay attention to to keep Ambrose safe. Now, when we go down, we take a look at the safety position, and they have some excellent people in the secondary. They have 14 interceptions as a team this year, and they're led by number 23, Jaden McBreen. McBreen is a 5'11", 165-pound freshman. So they're going to be around for a while. They're going to see him for a while. He has 25 total tackles, two and a half TFLs, and he leads the team with three interceptions. Um, you know, the rest of the secondary, uh, you've got uh, Nolan Wolbury, number 13, six foot, 160 pound sophomore. Number four, Davin Headwood at 5'11, 151 pound senior. They both have over 30 tackles, they have TFLs, and they've each got two interceptions. So Ambrose is going to have to be really aware of where the DBs are because they can't right. make plays on the football. Yeah, well, and it, it, he's going to have to be aware of, of possible pressure, too. Yes. So, so it, it, both teams seem to have have that that uh, possibility of, of, of being stymied by, by the defense because right. um, Defiance has a pretty good defense as well, and they're led by um, defensive end Dominic Harris, and he's 6'1", 220-pound sophomore out of Detroit. He has 52 tackles. He has 12 and a half tackles for loss, and he has a six and a half, six and a half sacks. Uh, on the other side, defensive Richard Pope is a 6'2", 255 senior. He has 45 ta- total tackles. Two and a half, again, two and a half. Uh, tw- excuse me, 12 and a half total. T- Tackles T- for TFL, loss yep. and then six at sacks. So, so the, they're going to put pressure from both sides. From both sides, right? And, and then on top of that, you also have uh, outside linebacker uh, Tom Coltrane, and he's a 5'11", 210 pound senior out of Michigan, and he has 86 total tackles, six and a half tackles for loss, and he has one, one fumble, fumble recovery. recovery 
for a touchdown of 95 yards. So, so pretty he, active. Yes. So we, we have defenses that look like they're going to try to exert, exert themselves on, on the offenses, <laughs> yeah. and we have offenses that seem to have different philosophies that are going to try to move that ball down the field and score. So. And, and Coltrane himself, we talked about Freeman a little bit earlier about having a ch- shot at 1,000 yards and moving up on the rushing records here in defiance. Uh, Coltrane is 10 tackles shy of becoming the all-time single-season tackle holder. He has 343 in his career, and I believe he's 17 shy of moving up to second on that list. So there's some incentives, especially for the seniors Seniors. playing their last game. And, of course, they're playing their rival. They're playing the Bluffton Beavers. And, uh, you know, there's no love lost between these two teams. You know, you talk about uh, on a larger scale, uh, scale we talk about Ohio State and Michigan and that and a lot of times when you look at these rivalries they're really not that close in the wins and losses right you know like Alabama and Georgia they'll say it's a great rivalry but Alabama has a 20 game lead in the right. series that's not the case in this game this game is separated by two games at this point uh, defiance can cut that to one game and uh, and we don't know with them going into a new conference when the next time they might play because that might interfere with them being scheduled. Okay, so we are at uh, about seven minutes ago, and let's talk about the uh, starting lineups. And I will get uh, the Yellow Jackets starting offense. We've got number nine, Jordan Ambrose, 6'2", 228-pound senior quarterback. Uh, Number zero, Tayshawn Freeman, six foot, two hundred thirty-seven pound senior running back. Uh, number seventeen, uh, Sanjay Gibson, five ten, one hundred seventy pound sophomore wide receiver. Number six, Tawan Rome, five ten, one hundred seventy pound junior. He is a wide receiver. Number eight, Jalen Warren, 5'11", 185 pound junior. He is a wide receiver. Number 13, Cole Recker, 6'2", 220-pound senior, tight end. At left tackle, number 52, Aiden Burke, 6'6", 271-pound junior. At left guard, 72, Brian Hammer, 6'3", 295-pound freshman. (laughs) A big boy there they're going to have for a few years. Uh, At center, number 74, Eric Moultrie, 5'11", 370-pound senior, big boy. Uh, At right guard, number 51, Andre Almore. He is 6'1", 281-pound senior. And at right tackle, number 77, Gabriel Bookman, 6'7", 305, sophomore. Some pretty good size up front for the Yellow Jackets. And then opposing them on the other side with Bluffton's defense, we have number 8 defensive end, Marvis McWright, senior, 5'11", 260 pounds. We have nose tackle number 95, Malik Eccles, senior 6'2", 243 pounds. And we have defensive end number 9, Andre Wines, senior 6'2", 205 pounds. The linebackers, outside linebacker number 7, Devin Hogan, sophomore 5'10", 200 pounds. Middle linebacker, uh, linebacker um, 50, number 51, Josh Newberger. Senior, 5'10", 195 pounds, and outside linebacker, number 33, Dom Barry. He's a junior, 5'8", and 186 pounds. And then coming back into the defensive backfield that Bill was talking about earlier, cornerback, number 13, Nolan Wobry, sophomore, 6 foot, 160 pounds. Cornerback, number 4, Davon Headwood, senior, 5'11", 150 pounds. Uh, safety number zero, Martez Neighbors, uh, senior, 5'7", 190 pounds. Safety 20, number 23, Jaden McBreen, freshman, 5'11", 165 pounds. And another safety, number 10, Alex Shorter. And we got the national anthem here.
Yeah, we had. We, I didn't know if you picked up on that. Yeah. I, I yeah, we were talking about their opponents. Play pretty good, pretty good people. Okay. Okay. So. And we're getting ready for the toss here. Um, we're going to get your captains here in just a second. And um, so, Doug, as we said, it is a beautiful day for football out here. And uh, we will be getting going here shortly. Um, let's see. Go on, Bethel. Uh, we have... We have Defiance in their gold uniforms with the purple trim and numbers, and we have we have um, Bluffton in their purple jerseys, white numbers, and black pants. Um, the the uh, captains are out talking to the uh, officials right now. Ready? And we're waiting for the toss. Okay, and our captains today for the Yellow Jackets. Uh, Jordan Ambrose, Tyshawn Freeman, Makari Biggums, Cole Recker, Dewan Bethel, and number 53, I believe. I don't have him listed as a senior, though. He's listed as a freshman there. I think, though, if I look on defense, I believe number 53. And we will get a hold of, we will find out who that is here. I mean, I don't have a for sure identification on that player. Um, okay, the toss is taking place. And so we're going to see here what what, uh, what happens quickly with the uh, coin toss. Uh, of course, Bluffton looks kind of like the... Uh, the Baltimore, or I'm sorry, the Indianapolis Colts there. Mm. Showed my age there for yeah. a second. Um, with uh, one minute and 30 seconds to go until the kickoff. Okay. So we will uh, get the opening kickoff coming here. And the Yellow Jackets are getting ready to regroup. And, of course, they are led by Coach Bill Nickel. And Coach Nickel has done a, a nice job here in his second year uh, on the verge of going 5-5. Five and five. And he's done a good job recruiting, Doug. Yeah. Uh, Defiance, um, traditionally for the last decade, has been a hard place to recruit players to. Uh, it is out in very rural northwest Ohio. And uh, he's done a nice job getting into Texas and Florida, down into the southeast, um, the whole Midwest. He. He's really got a, a good recruiting program going and has been able to, you know, fill the drawers with some good players here. And I would say that the same thing would apply. For Bluffton, yeah, the two programs that are looking looking to turn things around and seem to be on the rise. So Yeah, Coach Nardo um, in his second year also has been able to uh, do a nice job recruiting because Bluffton, again, has, you know, these schools are not separated by probably about, 60 miles between them and um, it makes it difficult uh, recruiting in this area because you have to you don't have the mall sitting right there right. you don't have all the attractions okay so uh, Bluffton is out for to receive the kick and back deep for the Beavers I believe there we'll get that is um, number six Number six, and number six, I think, let's, let's see, number six for Bluffton Nigel is Payne. Nigel Payne, okay. Nigel Payne. Okay. He's back deep and kicking off for, um, for Defiance is Zeke Sanchez. Okay. Number 10. Okay, so Zeke is getting ready to kick, and we are ready for some football here in Defiance, Ohio, at the beautiful Defiance College. And uh, this is our final broadcast for the Campus Nation College Game of the Week. And the kick comes down to Nigel at the 10. He's up to the 20, 25, 30. Broken. He breaks up over to 40, out to about the 48-yard line. And a great start for the Beavers. Is, um, yeah. uh, they, that was about a... 38-yard return. Right. Uh, for great uh, field position for for Bluffton. For Nigel Payne. 
Okay. So Bluffton comes out with three receivers to the left and Xavier Rayero in the in the shotgun formation. He gets the snap, play action fake, and right out. We'll get caught by number seven. And that would be Ethan Berenger, the 6'3", 190-pound senior. And, uh, and now, as we said before, all these starting receivers, Thompson, Berenger, and Payne, all have over 35 catches on the season. Um, Rero in the gun gives off the ball to the running back, who is up over uh, near a first down. He's down to about the 43-yard line. And that was um, Keenan Stoner, the running back. Okay, so we have a third and one. Stoner's a big kid. Mm -hmm. He's a 6'1", 212-pound junior. And so, you know, you might expect in this situation that you'll see Stoner getting the ball. Okay. So Guerrero gives it to Stoner, and Stoner bangs forward. And like a bull, he's down to... About the 37-yard line, Doug, and that's going to be a first down. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we got. We have, uh, we have a score on the Michigan, Penn State game. It is 14 to nine, Michigan over Penn State currently. Okay. Alabama leads Kentucky 28 to seven, and Texas Tech 10 to nothing over Kansas. Okay. First and ten. And Rero drops. He looks. Oh. He's looking for number three. Oh, just off the hands of C.J. Thompson. And, boy, that, that probably should have been six points right. there. Well, Defiance got a little pressure that time. Um, could have been a hold, it looked like to me, on, on one of the tackles. But uh, Okay, so that's going to bring up second and ten from the Defiance 37. I think Riero had to get rid of that ball just a second earlier than what he wanted to. Yeah, I agree. Riero puts his running back to his right. He motions, and then he gives off the uh, Stoner again. Stoner's down to the 30-yard line. And they're, they're, now right now, Defi uh, Bluffton's Got offensive it. line is doing a pretty good job up front. Um, Third and four for the Beavers. Guerrero gets a quick screen to Thompson. Thompson is inside. It looks like he's going to be close to the first down. It's going to really depend on the right, mark, Doug. Right. But uh, Bluff, uh, Defiance had four or five guys right there. Uh, you know, it wasn't they didn't have a long way to go? But uh, and it, Bluffland, Bluff, uh, excuse me, Defiance is right there. Yeah, yeah, and it is a first down for the Beavers, so they get a new set of downs here, Doug. And right now, uh, Rivero is um, he's using all the weapons out there right now. Okay, yeah, doing exactly what we expected. Yeah, two receivers to the right, one to the left. Rivero with Stoner to his right, and he gives the Stoner again, and oh, that was a hit! Nice and, hit by numbers. Seven, number seven. Um, and I'm, I'm going to bet number seven there. Vashon Palmer, cornerback, came up and just, just <laughs> smacked him down. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so the short gain there for Stoner, uh, he got stoned on that one. <laughs> <Sure> <laughs> so, pick up a two, second and eight for the Beavers, two receivers to each side. Guerrero drops. He's got number seven. Oh. For a touchdown, and that would be Berenger, Ethan Berenger, the 6'3", 190-pound senior. And on a post pattern, Doug. And the, Somebody missed an assignment oh, there yeah, he, because the linebackers, the linebacker, he, there was nobody behind the linebackers. So, And number 94, Drew Michael is out for the extra point. Michael is 26 of 29 on the season in extra points. And so, you know, just like that, oh, almost blocked. Bluffton takes a 7 nothing lead at 11.56 to go in the first quarter. And um, the middle of the field twice was open. It should have been a touchdown right. the time before. Right. So um, uh, Defiance's defensive coordinator. Uh, defi they're definitely going to have to have some talk on the side. 
uh, on the sidelines now. Yeah, Coach Black is probably uh, going to get him over on the bench and say, okay, let's see what's going on with that coverage. Okay, so back deep is Tuan Rome. So let's see if, the, if Defiance can uh, answer back here. Yeah, Tuan Rome and uh, uh, Dasmond Garrett are back deep. And kicking for Bluffton is... I think it's Michael. I think it's... Yeah, Drew Michael. Drew yeah. Michael, 94. yeah. 94. And um, so here's the... Uh, so we will see what the um, situation is here for defiance and defense. Um, it just, you know, the middle of the field has twice been just right. wide open. And I think that they're going to have to look at the coverage that they're using because uh, Bluffton knew exactly where they wanted to go. And there's a little pooch kick. It's going to come down about the 30-yard line. Picked up by number 97. That's Grant Hardeman. And uh, well, Grant. No, I'm on, th I'm on the wrong I think that's roster. No, it's 97 is Andre Tibbs. Andre Tibbs. And Andre with a little action there as he gets a, a short return. And so it'll be first and 10 for the Defiance Yellow Jackets. It's the first time we've seen them on offense today. That was probably a thrill for Andre. He's a defensive lineman. So. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't happen very often. Okay, so Ambrose gets the ball out quickly, and I believe that's Tuan Rome. Yes. Uh, no, it's number, oh, number eight. eight, Jalen Warren. Jalen Warren, my bad on that. And that's a first down right off the bat. Okay, three uh, receivers to the left. Bluffton came with some pressure that time. And there's – and that was a, uh, a little bit of a wildcat situation where it was snapped directly back to the running back on that. And I think that was uh, Wrecker. Cole Wrecker was the one that actually received that and ran the ball. Okay, so we've got second and nine. Jordan Ambrose drops, rolls to his left. He looks, he looks, pressured. He's, oh, he's out of it, and he's able to squirt up to about the 48-yard line, pick up of about six. It looked like he was in trouble there, he, but he, he did manage He managed to squeeze through and, and, and pick up a gain. So. It, he, he made himself thin, Doug, I think is what they say. <laughs> he kind of turned sideways and got through there. And uh, that, that's uh, manageable down now. Hard, uh, yep. Third and four. Ambrose looks, he looks, he gets out of there, and oh, just short. He's going to be out to the 50. He's about two yards short of the first down. And decision time, and I don't know. They didn't look it looks like, like, like he's, he, I, think, I think Coach is looking at, at trying to field position right now. Number 18, Matthew Bolanos, will be the punter for Defiance. He'll be kicking from his own 50-yard line here, and we will see how that uh, – how that goes here. So, Bolanos. And Berenger is back for, um, for Bluffton. Bluffton. There's and the punt. Bolanos gets about a 38 yard kick down to the 12. And Berenger is able to get it up to, it looks like maybe the 15 yard line. So, that's where Bluffton will start operations first and 10. Make it the 14 officially. So for Defiance now, the, the question is, have they solved the, solved that problem they were having with with the, the middle of the field deep? We're going to find out here real quick. Got, uh, we got that that coverage figured out now. So okay, 9:52 to go in the first period. Seven nothing. The Bluffton Beavers over the Defiance Yellow Jackets. Okay, Rorero with two receivers to the right. He gives it to Stoner. Stoner is barely back to the line of scrimmage, so it's nice job by by the defensive line of Defiance there. Yeah, a pickup of one, and that looks like that was number uh, number 66 for Bluffton. And we'll have to get a number on that. Um, Okay, so Rorero, Stoner to his left. He gives it to Stoner again, and Stoner is 
dragged down. Looks like number 45 for the Yellow Jackets made the first contact there. Pickup of about four. We got third and about a long five, five and a half. Braden Burkholtz on the tackle for the Yellow Jackets. Okay, Rorero is in the gun here with Stoner. Motion Stoner to his left. He drops, he looks, and gets again to the middle of the field. What's going to be good for a first down at the 30-yard line. And we'll get a number on the receiver here in a second. Yeah, he just and, and that's number uh, Andre num Wines. Okay, number fifteen made the catch for the Beavers, and that is Kale Lee, one of the backup receivers. Three receivers to the left, one to the right. Stoner in the backfield to the left of Herrero. Herrero gives the ball to Stoner, and Stoner powers his way up to about the twenty-five yard line. He's a, I think he's an unex, unexpected problem for for the Defiance. I, I I know that he yeah. was their leading rusher, but I, I don't think that they expected him to be as effective as he's been so far. Yeah, he's got 594 yards on the season and three touchdowns, so he he has some ability. Um, and they motion uh, Stoner out. And Rorero looks to the middle of the field again. They've got number seven. Oh, and that is Ethan Berenger. Berenger loses a wheel. Uh, he could have been gone on that if he had, <laughs> had fallen down. Yeah. He is down to the Defiance 45. Um, uh, and Rorero has uh, looked pretty sharp here in the beginning of this game, Doug. Okay, two receivers to the right. Rorero play action fake. He looks, he Lots looks, time. and well played, double covered yeah. there by Defiance. And uh, it looks like the intended receiver was, I think, Kale Lee again. So um, that's going to bring up second and long. And, you know, a, a theme I've seen here with uh, Bluffton is when they've got into those first and long situations in the Defiance territory, they go deep on first down This, you know, try to see if they can hit a home run right off the bat. Okay, uh, stack formation to the right. Rorero gives stoner. the ball off the Stoner, and Stoner is, a, wow, oh. Stoner is able to. Kept his feet. Oh, oh the ball's on the ground, and it looks like Defiance has it. Yes, they do. And That's Defiance so has the ball. Uh, they recovered the ball at the 36-yard line after a nice eight-yard run by Stoner. Yeah, he well, that's a big play for Defiance because uh, I don't think they wanted to go down by two early. So now let's see if they can move the ball. Yeah, and I think that's going to be the big, the bugaboo, so to speak, is that Defiance uh, needs to get something going here. Okay. Well, you know, other than um, Ambrose's runs, uh, Freeman has been held pretty much in check so far. Yeah, he hasn't really been utilized too much here. And a jet sweep to the wide receiver there and met hard. Okay, that was number six, and that was Tuan Rome. Rome was met hard by the, the linebacker from Bluffton. <coughs> pretty much no gain there. Yep, so we're at second and ten from the – Ambrose going downfield. Oh, and he's got he's got number him. Number twelve. Number twelve is Dasmond Garrett, and he is the big. You know, we talked about him a little bit. Uh, he averages nineteen point four yards per catch, and and that's why he does. He got snuck deep. Okay, re three receivers to the left, one to the left. Ambrose drops. He looks. He looks. He gets the ball to the middle. Oh, and I it think it's picked him. off. It is number 10 for Bluffton. That is Alex Shorter, the 6'1", 165-pound sophomore. Wow. And what a play. And we talked about it in the pregame. Uh, Bluffton's got 14 interceptions right. this year. Right. So, they're ball hawks in the back there. Yeah. So they're very active. The ball comes out to the 20. And what a disappointment for the Yellow Jackets because they had gotten position there, Doug. To, they were moving the ball. Uh, yep. 
And I think so, Ambrose just held the ball just a little long there because certainly the receiver was open. Open. And, it, you know, once it's tipped up in the air, it's anybody's yeah. ball at that point, and Shorter came down with it. Okay, so Rorero, uh is getting ready here with two receivers to his left. One to the l his running back to the left. And he drops, and he gives it up to number 25. And that's a pickup of about five yards for Bluffton. And that is, well, we're going to have to get a number here. 25 is, um, nope. Number 25 is Salou Karoma. He's a 5'9", 150-pound sophomore from Westerville Central High School in Columbus. Okay. Rorero drops. He looks. Gets the ball out to number seven, Behringer again. And that's going to be good for a first down. And right now the Yellow Jackets just do not have an answer for the passing game. I mean, the well, they're not, not, I mean, these are like short curl routes. That, that, and then they, th then they throw a home run they, ball. They they set, try yep, to throw, yeah. Yep. Okay, two receivers to the right, one to the left. Marrero with Stoner to his right. Okay. And they look over to get an adjustment on the play. First and 10 from the 34-yard line. And they get the ball out. Ball is tipped. Tipped. Tipped by number 42. Um, and Richard. This is a Richard Pope, I think. Yeah, that's Pope. Pope, as we talked about, is one of the defensive ends are very impressive for Defiance. You've got Dominic Harris on one side and Richard Pope on the other side. And between the two of them, they have 12 sacks. So um, we know that they can bring some pressure. Okay. Bluffton's been doing a good job of keeping them off the quarterback. Ooh. <laughs> that was a hit. <laughs> that was a, a fill by number seven, Vishon Palmer. That's the second big hit he's had today. Uh, Palmer came. I uh, had his Wheaties this morning, Doug, <laughs> because he, he he knifed in there and just knocked him on his butt. And that was number 25. who carried the ball. Salua Kanoma, again, the 5'9", 150-pound sophomore out of Westerville. Okay, so second or third and eight. And Rero gets the ball oh, out and, and knocked away. away. Okay. Knocked away nicely by the Bluffton um, defense. And that was number 24, Tykez Douglas. He's 5'11", 165-pound junior. He is from Kentucky Christian. And he had um, 13 total tackles this year, one TFL, and he has two interceptions, Doug. So he closed on that very quickly. Okay, punt formation. I think it's Drew Michael is back to punt. Rome back for for defiance. Michael has uh, 26 punts this year for a 32.8 average and almost blocked. And that ball is going to take a, a bluffed and bounce, and it's going to roll down about the 22-yard line. That's where the defiance Yellow Jackets will take over with 4.26 to go in the first period. Um, so, you know, a, a little bit of a misfire by Bluffton there. So let's see if uh, Defiance can take advantage of this and get get it in the end zone this time. And, uh, and I would say at this point we expect a little bit more scoring, Doug. We expected, <laughs> we expected more scoring, but it, it, it seems like uh, the teams have reversed their, their, roles, trends, yeah. their trends today <laughs> yeah. offensively because and there's, uh, I think that's Tayshawn Freeman with the carry. And Tayshawn picks up about five or six yards. And it's going to run that up to the 28 where it's going to be second and five for the Yellow Jackets. And we haven't seen it. It's the nope. first time we've called Freeman's number, I right. think. Uh, right. It, it, totally unexpected because we expected that we were going to see a lot of running from uh, from Defiance and, and a lot of passing from um, – Bluffton, and it seems to be the reverse. Now, Bluffton is passing the ball quite a bit, but they they certainly were having a steady diet of, of runs early on from um, 
And I think that's number 26 for the Yellow Jackets. From Stoner. And uh, 26 is Kahari Hurt, the 5'9", 162-pound freshman running back out of Detroit, Michigan. And uh, so we've got empty backfield, three to the left, two to the right. Freeman out here. Ambrose looks, little quick screen. Oh, oh and it kind of, Freeman just didn't get control that quick enough. So that's going to make it uh, fourth down. Punting situation for the Yellow Jackets. And they just, they haven't found that rhythm yet, Doug. No, no. They just they haven't got it going. Um, 3.20 to go in the first period. And number 18, Matthew Bolanos will be kicking. And Behringer is back for for uh, Bluffton. Bolanos has a 38-yard average on the season. And so there's the kick, and Bolanos gets it off. Oh, nice, nice kick. Punt. Drives n- drives Fair. Behringer back. Fair catch. He caught it at the 25-yard line. So that was a good punt. Yeah. So Behringer uh, drives the – Beaver offense back to their own 25, and let's see what uh, happens here. So uh, things have slowed down a little bit as far as the scoring and the offense. Well, we, we did think we were, we were going to see a defensive game. We, we thought the defense yeah, could, yeah, yeah. could dominate, and it, it, now it's, it's beginning to get that way. And last year the score was 17-14, so, you know, <laughs> there's no, no reason to believe we couldn't be headed that way again. Okay, we got two receivers to the left, one to the right, Guerrero. In the backfield with Stoner, and he drops, he looks, gets it out quick to Nigel Payne, the 5'6", 145 pound sophomore. Oh, flag, what's that about? And we will a little late flag. It's on the sideline there, so probably some John going on, I would think. Uh, Payne has 38 receptions on the season with a 17.3 yard average. And he has six touchdowns. So he's one of that explosive trio of receivers that Bluffton has. Uh, we're still waiting on the call here to see what this is going to do. Personal foul. Yeah. And I suspect something was said on the sideline. Must have been. Right. And so now we're going to have... Um, First and 15 from the 21 yard line, and so uh, boy, that, you know, that hurts. Well, you went you went from having a, a first down on that play to now being back behind it. Okay, Guerrero gives it to Stoner. Stoner cuts back across the middle, and he rumbles out to about the 29 yard line. Nice, nice run, run by Stoner. Pick up a nine. They have not figured out how to stop him yet. I mean, he's no. he's been gashing them pretty good. Yeah. Um, and again, that's the surprise with uh, with the aerial attack that they have. That they've been running him a lot, and for sure. Okay, two receivers to the left, two to the right. Rero drops into the gun. Stoner off to his right. We've got third and about seven, and he drops. He looks and it down. Knocked it down. Looks like by numbers at 97. Number 97 on. And I think that's our uh, kick return guy for Defiance. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Andre Tibbs. Yeah, Tibbs. 6'3, 230 pound freshman from Lima Senior, Lima, Ohio. Defenses are stepping up. Yeah, and that's what you expect in rivalry games. A lot of times, uh, you know, as we've seen in a lot of the Ohio State-Michigan battles, they don't end up being scoring fest. Two high-power offenses end up getting a 14-10 to 10 score or something like that. Okay, there's the snap, and, woo, bad snap. The ball's taking a backward spin and down at about the 48-yard line. Good starting field position for uh, Defiance yeah. now. Need to take advantage. Yeah, Defiance needs to get something rolling here with 2.15 to go in the first period. Um, now, whatever they've done on defense, Doug, Defiance has been able to adjust to the, the passing attack there. Although, as you said, Stoner's still been – I would say you have to worry about that because if they would happen to get up by 14 and they could start rolling with Stoner right. on the ground, 
Yeah, because he's, he's getting four or five yards of carry pretty much. Yep. So uh, we've got three receivers to the right, one to the left, and there is uh, Freeman, and Freeman bowls his way up to the 48-yard line into Bluffton territory. Nice four-yard run right off the bat. And um, and that, was, that looked a little bit more serious on the offensive line there right. for defiance on that. Okay. So Ambrose in the gun with Freeman off to his right. He drops. He looks. Gets the ball out quickly. Oh, nice. And catch. it's Tuan Rome, I believe, number six. Rome gets it, uh, goes out at 37, which would be good for a first down. And uh, Defiance's offense needed that yeah. to, to get some kind of continuity going for him. Okay. Keep two, the chains moving. Keep the chains moving if you're Defiance. Two receivers each side play action. Ambrose gets out of the pocket, dumps it to Freeman. And, uh, and you know, improvised play there. Right. He, he just give us a little shovel pass, which still is good to pick up three yards for Freeman, making it second and seven from the 35-yard line of Bluffton. And there's Freeman now, and he just powers through for a couple more yards down to about the 32-yard line. Well, third and five now. So they're, they're in a manageable situation. And, and definitely four down territory if they want. Okay, under one minute to go in the first period. And uh, Defiance is just uh, getting the call from the sideline. Looks like they're taking a little break there. Yeah. And, uh, okay, Freeman is going to line up over in the slot to the right. Three receivers to the left. They need to, they need to get, get set and go because they're starting to run. I think they're going to have to take a timeout. Yeah, well, there it was, timeout. Yeah. Okay, so timeout, first one for, for Defiance. And uh, we've got a commercial break here. So, Rick, take it away. Autumn is an excellent time to enjoy the great outdoors. It's also a great time to experience the scenic upper Cuyahoga River in beautiful Geauga County. At Crooked River Adventures, we are open year-round, seven days a week, and we rent kayaks, paddle boards, and canoes. Before or after your voyage, you can enjoy our restaurant with patio and bar, or you can bring your own picnic. Crooked River Adventures are perfect for school outings and for family bonding. For more information, visit CrookedRiverAdventures.com. Oh, let Al on. I'm going to go get my phone. Okay. That way I can start okay. looking out. Okay. 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 So we're back here with 32.8 seconds in the first period. Defiance with a third down and five on the 33-yard line. Okay, Ambrose in the gun. He takes the snap. He rolls to his left. He he's should rolling, just go. He's he rolling. should just go. He yeah. should just go. And there he, he is. Does. And, he, nice. and then that spin move, we got about another three, four yards on that. About a, looked like uh, about a 13-yard gain there for Ambrose. and rolls it down to, I make a 12, check that, 12-yard uh, gain down to the 21 of Bluffton. And so uh, we're almost in the red zone here, Doug. And now they give it to Freeman, Freeman. and Freeman. And now he's whoa. pounding. Oh, there's a load. Okay. So now they're starting to starting to march. And that ball uh, gets down to about the 14-yard line. Nice pickup on first down, though, about six or seven yards for and Freeman. And that's the quarter. And so the end of the first quarter, it is the Bluffton Beaver 7 and the Defiance Yellow Jackets 0. And so we will be... Um, we will be joined now. Uh, Doug's going to step out, and Al Matthews is going to join us here in the second quarter. And uh, Al is the former head football coach at Hocking College down in um, Nelsonville, the first and only junior high or junior college junior, football yeah. program. Uh, so, your, what's your impressions of this first half, Al? Uh, you know, I see some really good things from uh, Defiance. I just can't get in a rhythm, though. But. Yeah. Yeah, their quarterback reminds me of the, the gentleman at uh, Toledo, University of Toledo. Their QB, uh -huh. um, kind of tall, thin, but he's got some deceptive speed. And keeps plays alive with his feet, as we saw in that one. It, he rolled out, he rolled out, and once he knew he had the edge, he just took off just, and went. Yep. So um, you know, a big thing here now. Uh, we've got 
the ball is at the 14 yard line with a second and four. And, and the Yellow Jackets have started to get um, uh, Tayshawn Freeman going a little bit here in this drive, which, you know, he's got over 800 yards rushing this year. And, and uh, he would be the guy that you want to try to get rolling if you want to control the clock and that. So it looks like we've got two backs in the backfield, one to the each side of Ambrose, two receivers right, one to the left. Ambrose looks over, they get the uh, call, he adjusts the line blocking, and now he gets ready to take the snap, and there is the snap. And he gives it play action to Freeman, and they get the ball for a touchdown. touchdown. Nice. He dropped that in a bucket, man. That was pretty good. Yeah, it looks like that's number 20, 23. Three, yeah. So that's number 23 for um, for Defiance. Malcolm McNeil? Uh, yeah, let's see here. Oh, that's a line 23 right is uh, Cooper, Cooper Sloan, Sloan yeah. a 6-foot, 185 pound sophomore from Cherryville, North Carolina. And the kick by Sanchez is good. Sanchez was 27 of 34 going into this game on extra points. And we got a new ball game, Al, with 14.54 to go in the second quarter. Fans um, are energized. So we're, we're not used to games like this. No. <laughs> <laughs> no uh -uh. We have seen games get out of hand real quick this year. And um, so this should be uh, should be exciting here to see how this uh, this game plays out because as I said last year, it was 17-14 Defiance winning on Bluffton's home court. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, we'll see. Um, you know, and as both teams are playing, they're not going to be in the playoffs, Al. But um, as we said, for Bluffton who went two and eight last year, they win another one at four and six. That forces uh, Defiance to four and six, so they don't have a 500 season. And for Defiance to win, it gives them the 500 season, which has eluded them for about the last seven years. That'll so. definitely motivate uh, freshmen through uh, juniors. Right, to keep the people interested. And, you know, you want to, uh, Coach Nickel wants to take that next step in the program. And going three and seven to five and five would be great for him. So a squib kick to the middle of the field and it's fielded by Behringer, I believe, number seven. Yeah, Ethan Behringer. Yeah. And um, uh, oh. um, so Defiance uh, ball is uh, was covered at the 29 yard line, Bluffton's own 29 yard line. So it'll be first and no, they're going to say it's at the 30. So first and 10 from the 30. Barrero is in the backfield with Stoner. He's got two receivers to the right, one to the left, and he gets ready for the snap. He looks, and Barrero gives it to Stoner. Stoner goes to his left, and he's met hard by number 44 there. I think that's Dominic Harris. And uh, see who the... I'll tell you what, I've always said D3, is have, they definitely have good football. But man, they've been hitting out here. Yeah, there have been some uh, some great hits. Of the Defiance defense is that uh, the Sean Palmer has Whew, come, <laughs> laid some wood a couple times. Okay. Uh, Rorero, he's got two receivers to his right, gives the Stoner again, and Stoner is met. A short gain of one. And it looks like they got that, uh, they might have the run figured out there because Stoner was gashing them pretty he much sure in the first was. quarter. Especially those first two drives. Yeah. So we've got uh, third and eight, 14 minutes ago, second period. And um, so Herrero with two receivers to the right, two to the left, Stoner in the backfield, points out to the offensive line who the the blitzer's going to be oh, on that. Yeah. And Marrero drops and he guns the ball out. It looks like it might be a little short. I think it's going to be, uh, that was number three. Yeah, Just so short. Third and two for Bluffton. And uh, they're going to bring, looks like they're going to bring in some. One, yeah. 
Our fourth and one from the 39 yard line. And it, for it. Now this could, it could be trying to draw them off, Al. Yeah, I mean, that's true. So two receivers to the right, they brought in their heavy set. No, they are going for it. And Stoner on a, picks up five yards out to the 45 yard line. Nice hard run. Uh, and that's gonna give the Beavers a new set of downs at their own 45. And yeah, Stoner was not gonna be denied yeah, on that one. Not at all. Okay, two receivers to the right. Barrero gives the ball to Stoner again. Oh, got him. Don't think this time. And that's going to be number 42 and Lost number the yard. Number 42 and number two for, I think that's Thomas Coltrane. Yeah. Uh, Coltrane, and so as we said, he needs 10 tackles today to uh, set a new record for single season tackles. Okay, second and 12. That was a tackle for loss there. And so two receivers to the left, one to the right. Herrero gets the ball out on a quick screen. Oh, wow. nice block. Yeah. Number three. And oh, and that's going to be enough for a first down as Bluffton works their way out to about the 43-yard line. And that would be uh, C.J. Thompson on that. And Thompson, uh, boy, he, he read this block really well there, Al, and was able to, you know, score it up the sideline and get that first down. That was a heck of a block. <clears throat> yes, it was. So from the 43-yard line of Defiance, that's where Bluffton starts with first and 10, and wow. Stoner just rips through there down to the 35, about a seven-yard gain, Al. And he keeps running like that and hitting those safeties like that. It's going to be a, an easy third quarter for him. Yeah. They don't want to come. They don't yeah, want they, to step up. They say, well, we're, not, we're not crazy. <laughs> we're not, gonna do, not getting another headache yeah. this, on this one. Okay, looks like a pistol formation for Rero receivers to each side, and they give it to Stoner. Now, this time, Stoner is met in the backfield. It's going to be about a loss of one. It looks like Dominic Harris, number 44, is in on that. And so we're going to be um, third and four from the 36-yard line. 10.45 to go in the first half. Two receivers to the right, two to the left. Guerrero with Stoner to his right. Motion Stoner to the right. He drops, he looks, gets the ball out to number seven, Behringer. And Behringer is able to move the ball up to about the 25-yard line, it appears. That DB took a bad route to that. He played the ball, not the man. Yep. So first down for the Beavers at the Defiance 24-yard line. Herrero drops. He looks, and he's got a little hitch and go. Oh, he back it. shoulder to C.J. Thompson. Nice. <clears throat> Boy, that's great placement. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's two weeks in a row we've seen quarterbacks yeah. that have been able to do that. But uh, Rero just got that ball right in there. And that's a first down, and we are down in the red zone. Looks like the 10-yard, well, maybe the 11-yard line. So 11-yard line here. First and 10, Rero gives it to Stoner. Stoner wow. off to his left. Makes something out of nothing there. He saw that gap open up and was able to cut back. Got down to about the uh, seven yard line. So we're going to be at uh, second and seven. No, second, well, maybe second and six here from the seven yard line. So they can still get a first down now. And then Stoner. Ooh. Oh, Stoner is met there right at about the six yard line. And nice play. Noticing he gets popped on and second down. And that was uh, number two, Thomas Coltrane. We talked about Thomas has he's got a shot to establish some new tackle records today for for the Yellow Jackets. Okay, third and five. And so this is a uh, third and goal from the five. And drop by Herrero. And Herrero, oh! 
he is met. Down, got down to about the two. I think he's short of the first down. Yeah, he's so I think we're gonna be about fourth and one. Maybe less than one, Al. Yeah, i seeing where Mr. Official is right leg is. Yeah. He's a, tell you, Boudoir yeah, came. got two yards to go. Boudoir came off, off that corner and just made sure that there was no extra yards there. So they're going to say two yards. So fourth and two. Uh, Bluffton is going for it. Two receivers, they give it to Stoner. And Stoner and is in the end zone. So that is a touchdown for Bluffton. So at 8.05 to go, Bluffton takes a 13 to seven lead. And um, when we get Doug working back here on some scores, maybe there's been some scoring somewhere. In somewhere. The country. <laughs> Although we just, had, we just had a touchdown here, so. Um, I think Mount was 3-3, so Mo by the way. Mount Union? Yeah, they were 3-3. <laughs> that, that was the only score other than this one. Drew Michael, number 94, attempting extra point. Good. And Michael is perfect on the day, and that moves him to 28 out of 31 on his extra points. So, um, now who is Mount playing, Al, on that? Uh, Mount... Uh, who they? Are they BW? BW. Uh, so it's Michigan 17 and Penn State 9. As Jim Harbaugh gets to sit out today. If he did, I just read something on my way up here that said that well, he hadn't decided if he was going to sit out. <laughs> well, they were trying to get a court injunction on him. Um, but the thing is, this is uh, Veterans Day oh. weekend, and they said that there was no judges available. So uh, it'd be too bad if he had to sit out. You know, I, I can be bold and daring, but that letter that Michigan sent to uh, <laughs> the Big Ten. Yes, yes. Wow, I, was, I wouldn't poke the bear. M maybe they want to join the Pac-12 or something. <laughs> <laughs> so here comes Michael's kick, and as we said before, it is a little pooch kick down to uh, – Okay. Oh, and he fumbled. Well, it's out of bounds, though. I don't think that's. Defiance uh, ball. Yeah, I was going to say, the, I think the fumble occurred out of bounds. So we've got first and 10 for Defiance at the 38-yard line, at the Defiance's own 38-yard line. And uh, they're going to have to answer, Al, because, you again, we've talked in many of these games. When you get down 14, it changes everything for everything. you. So we got two receivers to each side for Ambrose. Freeman in the backfield. Bring the motion and gives it to Freeman. And Freeman on the cutback. And he's over to 40. Out to the, wow. Dives over to 45 to almost the 47-yard line. Close to enough for a first down. He'll be a little short. He'll be at second and three. But, uh, boy, that was a nice play by Freeman reading nice. that. Freeman's a load, too, when he comes yeah, he's through there. athletic for a big guy. I was going to say, that's a 5-2 nose tackle there. Yeah. <laughs> three receivers. Oh! oh receiver fell. And number 12, Dasmond Garrett, slipped when he was hitching it up and his foot came out. And um, he would have been a first down had he... Had he caught the ball there. So we're looking at third and two again from the 46-yard line. And I wouldn't be surprised to see a rollout here, Al, where uh, Ambrose has that run option in case things break down. Yeah, so, like they're going to bring the heat on defense. Yeah. So they, you'd believe they'd try to get outside, maybe to the right, to the trip side, I would think. So we'll see. And he's got Freeman to the right. And he's going to play action. And, oh, he's going to run it right up the middle. First down. He's down to the 47-yard line of the Beavers. And <laughs> there was no rolling out on that one. That was just north-south. Yeah. Okay, we've got some scores here. We've got um, in a big game in the HCAC, Mount St. Joseph 21 and Rose Holman 13. And we'll, we'll get those. Uh, we got... First and 10 from the 47. Ambrose gets the ball out quickly to Dasmond Garrett. And Garrett is 
and able to make, I mean, he made something out of nothing there. He may have got about three or four yards. So you're going to be looking at second and seven. And, okay, so let's get uh, get back to some of our scores. We've got Wittenberg 21 and Wooster 10, and we've got Wabash 17, DePaul 14. Big game in the uh, NCAC there. Yeah. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. We've got Ambrose with Freeman to his left. He drops, he looks, gets the ball. Oh! He caught it. Oh. Big defensive end, caught it. Wow. Number, nine, number 95 for uh, Bluffton. That is uh, Malik Eccles, the 6'2", 243-pound senior out of Mount Healthy in Cincinnati. Uh, that's his second, if I'm not mistaken, that's his second interception of the year. I believe so. Yeah. I tell you, one hand. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And let's see what happens with this. I don't think the lineman saw his knee touch. So they're they're gonna talk this over. Question is who is it on? Yeah. So they're gonna eat the flag there? Oh, Still blocking at the okay, okay. So it is on defiance, and that ball moves down to the 43-yard line of the Yellow Jackets. 6:24 to go in the half, and um, Bluffton's threatening here. Okay, Mount Union 10, Baldwin Wallace 3, Muskingum 7, Marietta 0, Ohio Northern 7, Wilmington 0. St. Vincent 16, Bethany 14, and Washington Jefferson 27, Waynesville 7. Okay. Uh, first down, Rorero gives it to Stoner. Stoner on the reverse, gives it back to Rorero. Rorero's got wide number open. 18 wide open down at the 10. And that is Chris McLaurin, the junior 5'11", 210-pound junior and uh so we got a little trickeration there guys with that was a nice little play it, it was i thought it was gonna get blown up there for a minute but yeah didn't look good in the beginning but uh it let mclaurin uh work his way downfield so two receivers to the left we've got short receiver to the right he gives it the stoner stoner again now this this time stoner maybe Got over to 10, maybe picked up about a half a yard. It's going to be a second and uh, second and nine. Second or second and goal from the nine. What's that? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I would say, I don't know what you guys would think, but watching the first half, Bluffton's played with more zeal than uh, Defiance has right now. Yeah, a lot more energy. Two receivers to the left. Marrero drops. He looks. He looks. A little pressure. Oh, and Behringer, if they count at all. Oh, nice catch by Behringer. Beautiful route. Behringer bent the, the corner to the inside, broke to the outside, had plenty of room to make the catch. And so 20 to 7 at 5.07 to go in the second period. And uh, Defiance looks a little stunned right now, guys. Yeah, they're off. Uh, and I think that's... They're, uh, they're definitely off, off their game. I think the important thing here is, uh, you know, if Defiance goes down and scores, I believe they receive the second half kickoff. And so, yeah, they get back in the game. So the kick by um, kick by Michael is good. Michael is now 3 for 3, and he is 29 for 32 on the season. So... Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll get some. Uh, Doug gets some scores I didn't get to there. We'll try to get people updated on those. Okay, uh, down here in the Division One, you've got Michigan still leading Penn State seventeen to nine. Alabama twenty-eight, Kentucky or three, 
and Texas Tech 13 and Kansas 0. So that wraps up Division 1 as we know it right now. <coughs> a lot of late games today in the top 25. Of course, the Buckeyes play at 7.30 against Michigan State. I wouldn't say that was one of the big games of the day, but... But, uh, you know, I think a game that could be interesting could be Mississippi and Georgia. I agree. That could uh, that could end up being a good shootout there. So we've got Twan Rome. Uh, is, well, they've, they've switched the deep people around here because Bluffton has uh, been pooch kicking here, and they've been not kicking it deep. So, again, they've stayed with that philosophy. And, oh, okay, that's Dasman Garrett, and Garrett – is at the 25. He gets out to about the 26 yard line. I, I, guys, wouldn't you? I think we would make some adjustments. We know they're going to kick short like that. And you get some skill people back in those situations. There would be. I mean, I would. I would. After the second time they do that, I'm I'm making some moves. At least move one of them up. Or yeah, something. yeah. Put them in the front line, but you don't want them back there catching that thing. Or not catching the thing. Yeah, because they're kicking it to the guy on the right. So yeah. Clearly think he's a. Okay, Ambrose in the gun. He takes it, gets it out to Freeman. Freeman is able to. No, Freeman. Oh, nice. Wow. I thought he was going down at about the 25. And Freeman squirts out over to the 30. And that's going to be second and five for the Yellow Jackets. Bluffton's got a man down. Number Looks like number one. Okay, so the clock is stopped with an injury there. And number one for uh, could, could be Deshaun McGee, the junior defensive back, 5'7", 177 pounds. He is also from Detroit, Michigan. So um, I think, you know, Coach Nichols probably having a come-to-Jesus moment here with the uh, team and saying, uh, guys, <laughs> you uh, dug yourself a little bit of a hole here. And uh, now you've got to address that and go down the field and get some points. And, as, you know, we t just talked about it. If they're able to go down and score and receive the second-half kickoff, well, then, you know, all's good. Of course, they're still going to probably have to play a little defense here if Bluffton's able to get the ball back with any time. So, um, but, uh, boy, you know, we, for our last game of the year, guys, if you'd have told me on November 11th, We'd have this kind of weather. I would have, I would have laughed because we had a few earlier in October that it said, like, "Okay, this is going to be a cold, cold fall." Of course, next week we will be um, at Toledo, I believe, to do providing Ohio State wins their club football game today, and they will be playing uh, Michigan State. And that game will be brought to you um, uh, by Rick and Joe here. And um, so uh, stay tuned to that. See, follow the Buckeyes and see if their uh, club football team can uh, move towards another national championship. Okay, so Defiance is uh, coming out. Get chewed on a little bit by coach. And, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so we got a two-by-two two set there. And Ambrose in the gun with Freeman to his right. And he drops, gives it to Freeman, and Freeman is, well, swallowed up in the backfield. Uh, didn't even get to the line of scrimmage. He's back at about the 29. So we're going to be looking at uh, third and seven, I believe. And uh, so, again, I don't understand a little bit as far as what well, I think Ambrose is most dangerous is when you get him out on the edge whether it be a bootleg or rollout, where he's got that option to, you know, use his legs and pick up the first down. He is the second leading rusher for the team this year. Okay, Ambrose rolling to his right. He's in trouble, and he's taken down. And that's number 33 for Bluffton. And that is um, Dominic Berry, the junior linebacker, 5'8", 186 pounds, out of Brooklyn High School, Brooklyn, Ohio. And... Uh, Wow, not much of a chance there. Things broke down pretty quick pretty there. Pretty quick, yeah. It was, uh, he came from the interior, too. And I think it was adjustment there because the other times we've seen Ambrose roll, we haven't seen that pressure come from the outside. And they probably said, hey, you see that quarterback roll that way, you're coming right now. Yeah. Okay, and there's a the kick. Bolanos 
It's a high kick. Gets out to about the, looks like going to die right around the 49-yard line. Defiance is a 49-yard line. So 3.20 to go, first period. It is 21-7, Bluffton over Defiance. And um, somewhat of a subdued Defiance crowd right now. Yeah. is. Uh, you know, I, I think after that 54-point outbreak last week against um, they thought, well, you save a few points for this week. Yeah. So, but here we go. So, Rorero has a uh, trips formation to his right, motions back over to the left with McLaurin and give the number 25 and oh. a little change of pace running back there, 15 yard gain for number 25. And that is Salua Kanoma, the sophomore running back, 5'9", 152 pounds, out of Westerville, Ohio. And, boy, that was a nice little little run there. Change the pace when you have Stoner coming at you. Now you go with the speed back. Yeah. Okay, pistol formation. And Salua is still in the backfield here and looks like they may – well. Uh, Rorero is going to get dragged down. Oh, almost. Big time fumble there. Right? No, they're calling down. Number 42 wow. for um, number 42 for Defiance, Richard Pope, uh, had the quarterback in his grasp, and he was swinging around. The ball rolled out, so it was a significant loss in addition, about a 10-yard loss on top of that. So you're looking at second and 19. And, boy, that was a play that was needed at that time, yeah. Al. Because, uh, you know, that uh, another another score here, as we said, it could be bad news. Okay, so Rorero is dropping. He play action. Gets it the number, gets it the number three, C.J. Thompson. And Thompson uh, boy, came down awkwardly. So 156 to go in the first half. Uh, got back a good portion of the yards. Got back about 12, 13 of those yards. So it's going to be um, going to be an interesting situation here. So they can get out of here with uh, giving up a field goal. I still think they got a good chance in the second half. Yeah, yeah. So they just got a little more consistent on offense. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, I, th I think Freeman – you got to get that Freeman train rolling there a little bit, and then that's going to open up your passing a little bit. i tell you what, I'd like to see him already out there. Yeah. Even though he's a big guy, he's athletic. I'm not sure he's got the speed to go to go, go out there. Go to distance. Yeah, and you need to get him maybe in motion with two receivers out there to block and get him that ball quickly. Let and they did earlier field. try to get that little quick screen to him. Yeah. And uh, – he lost the handle on the ball. So, <laughs> okay, so here we go. And that would have been open too on that play, by the way. But I just OCs, I think they get in their head sometimes. Let's throw that one out. Yeah. <laughs> so a give to Salua, and Salua is filled on by number forty-nine. And that is uh, number 49 is. Flag down. And that's Davidson LeCant on the tackle. Uh, Gary said, I knew with the sideline warning, the coach was in his ear the whole time. <laughs> so fourth, and, and this is no man's line, land here because. Yeah. I think the longest field goal attempt is only 38 yards this year. So two receivers to each side, fourth and about seven. And they motion um, Salua and to the middle of the field again. And it is touchdown for Ethan Berenger. And Berenger has been living there all day as um, – that's going to move the score out to 27-7 to with the extra point coming. 55 seconds to go in the first half. 
He outran two defensive backs and the safety fell. <coughs> so I'm not. Uh, yeah. So, um, I don't know how you outrun double coverage, but he sure did. Yeah. And uh, right now, first half has been all Bluffton. So the Beavers get ready. Michael's on the extra point, and he is now perfect on the day. And so Michael's is now 30 out of 34. And, um, you know, so 55 seconds. Al, what are, you, what are you thinking about as far as defiance? Um, you know, I, I think here this is one situation where you don't want Michael kicking short. Right. Because you could, you know, any kind of return gives him a shot at some points. But uh, we st and still haven't adjusted on this kickoff return. We got Dasmond Garrett there. And um, they've, they've moved the guys up a little bit, but. Yeah, still uh, probably kick it to the 25 to 30, let big big guy right to him. Right, right. Yeah, there they, well, okay, there, there we go. go. Okay. So, you get number 17 out there. And that is um, should jump. Sanjay Gibson, the wide receiver, sophomore wide receiver, which uh, which makes a lot of sense right in this situation. I know what I'd love in this one is uh, they kick it to him. I'd throw it all the way across the field to the other guy. Oh, the old uh, Music City I, Miracle? I, I, used to <laughs> run, I used to run that at least three times a year. Okay. Up to the 30, over to 35, out to the, about the 37. So not bad field position here no. with 50.6 seconds to go in the first half. Um, they got to just give him protection and let him throw it. Got to play what, you know, this is where you want to play tempo and get get things going. Get to get up in the ball and roll. And, uh, you know, I've always said that's my favorite time watching Ohio State is when they're running the no huddle and they're just boom, boom, boom. Yeah. And uh, there was no no better than J.T. Barrett on running that thing because he could get them out there and get them going. Okay, so first and 10 from the 37-yard line, and uh, Defiance needs a play. They need a, something to go. Tuan Rome, and he gets the ball out to number 17. Okay. And um, <laughs> threw it a little short. Ball hit the ground. Oh, oh, there we go. I was, I was looking for that. Okay. And that was uh, yeah, Sanjay Gibson who just made that catch. And they called it incomplete. Oh, they called it incomplete. So yeah. second. Wow, that is a terrible call. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so second and 10 from the 37. And uh, here we go. Ambrose. Gets ready for the snap. He drops. He looks. Goes to the middle of the field. And that was for Dasman Garrett. And, um, yeah. 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 Yep. He, yeah, he got, some, he got some momentum on it. But, yeah, the ones. Yeah. Well, like I say, when, when uh, Defiance played Mountain Union, that was one of the issues is the ball kind of floated in there, yep. you know. Okay. So here we go. We've got um, uh, Ambrose sends Rome in motion. He looks. He looks. He gets out of the pocket. He's met, though. And really, uh, Bluffton was, was spying him, and they were ready for him right there. And so now you're going to have um, – I guess you're going to let that clock run as much as you can, I would say, with fourth down coming up. I don't even know if they have to. You have to uh, snap it. Snap it. Yeah, I believe you're right. So that's going to be the end of the first half. And um, uh, I guess the only way you can sum that up is wow. So. And, and there we go. So at halftime, 28 to seven in favor of the Bluffton Beavers in the Hammer game. So the Hammer is halfway to Bluffton right now. So we will see what happens. I was hoping to see what the Hammer looked like. I didn't see it on the sideline. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking it may look like any new there. Any new scores? 
Okay. So, uh, Mount Union, Baldwin Wallace still 10 to three. Muskingum, Marietta, seven nothing. Muskingum, seven nothing. Ohio Northern over Wilmington. In the President's Athletic Conference, St. Vincent 16, Bethany 14. Washington and Jefferson 33, Waynesburg 7. In the Heartland Conference, Bluffton 28, Defiance 7, Mount St. Joseph 21, Rose Holman 13. In the North Coast Conference, we've got Ohio Wesley, or Denison 22, Ohio Wesleyan 20, Wittenberg 21, Wooster 10. And the big game in that conference is DePaul 21 and Wabash 17. Um, nothing going on yet with the, uh, well, Alabama and Kentucky is now 28-14. Um, Alabama, Texas Tech, and Kansas 13-7 in favor of Texas Tech. And Michigan and Penn State is at the same score right now. So, so we will, uh, when Rick gets back here, we'll run a little commercial and, uh, see what we can do so uh, so guys what are you, you looking at the season um, high points low points what did what was the the parts you liked the best of it I like having competitive games uh, yeah. competitive <laughs> this, games this one, this one can be yes uh, defiance yeah I would agree um I think maybe one of the, the best ones that we had a chance to do was the Geneva-St. Vincent game. Um, it, yeah. Yeah. And a little strategy at the end where the coach took the safety instead of punting, so protected his lead. And, you know, a lot of people are saying, what are you doing? Why are you taking the safety? You know, but he knew exactly what he was doing on that. Um, and, you know, we, and we talked about it as first time out to Geneva, at least for me in many years. And what a beautiful stadium. I mean, it was just a, just a nice setting out there. And, uh, you know, hopefully. I mean, it was a night game, but it was very much like today's weather. Yes. Yeah, it was a, it had that fall chill, but it was still yet nice. And um, so, you know, that was a, a, a great game. Of course, we've, we've seen some. Some really good teams, and we saw Heidelberg in the very opener score 68 points, and uh, was very impressive with that. Um, it just shows you the the quality of the OAC when you know Heidelberg wins 68 to 14, and then they play Mount Union later and get beat 41 to three. So, um, just tells you the story of uh, Division Three football in Ohio, and. Uh, all roads lead through Alliance. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, of course, Mount will be setting up for a playoff game next week, and yeah, and they, and uh, and Baldwin Wallace, who used to be one of their, you know, it's went through cycles, guys, in the OAC for a long time. BW and Mount were the the nemesis. Yeah. And then uh, kind of changed there for a while. You had uh, John Carroll stepped up. Ohio Northern, who stopped Mount Union's 110-game winning streak. Um, Can you remember that coach that, that Ohio Northern? I, uh, a guy asked me the other day, and I forgot to look it up, but the year that Ohio Northern stopped that was the year that the – I don't know if you guys remember this, but the coach – Ohio Northern got a DUI. He drove through a house, <laughs> um, and they he had a grad assistant that had just played with the Browns. His his name was Paul, and his last name was Paul. Paul. And I, a guy asked me the other day, and I said, "No, I remember what happened." Yeah, and it was like just before the season started, and they lost a week before. Yeah, and then they come back and beat <laughs> beat Mount Union, and then the guy did kind of disappeared after that. Yeah. Um, I'll, 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 it'll come to me. Um, okay, well, we're going to take a little break here. We'll be back with you guys, and uh, we're at uh, 15 minutes to go here until uh, the kickoff. We'll be back a little bit before halftime is over. I don't know why. Lenny, he finds one four games. Can we believe? 
believe how many people stop at my door and ask, hey, how much is it to rent your, this your one roller? This side is the defense. And I don't know that he rents it. Playing the defense well. man up here. <laughs> this the other side, they're playing five yards off the guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, there's a lot of people that, that well, <laughs> it's kind of a little funny. Like, a, few, a few years ago, he had that huge Trump sign right next to their driveway that's right next to our driveway. So, and my wife was just, oh my gosh, everyone thinks <laughs> she, she was, Dave Vogel song? Yeah, uh, I, if you know where he lives, we're just east, we're in the big white house. East of that, they, they no, the flower shop's a few doors down, yeah. No, there, there was a, I'm fairly certain once upon a time, there was a house there on that empty lot. And I, I think Vogel Songs just bought the lot and raised the house. And, and, and uh, he, he's kept the garage so that he's got an extra city championship down there in Oh, was he? Okay, maybe he does. Then. Maybe. I've never I've never asked him to. I probably should, but I've never asked him to roll our yards. <laughs> so I don't know if he does it or not. Tell you what, he's out there mowing a lot. So I'm glad Bill won the championship last year. Because the first time a player and, and then his wife does all the uh, trimming and the, uh, uh, the, 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 the yeah, flower beds and stuff in the front yard. Autumn is an excellent time to enjoy the great outdoors. It's also a great time to experience the scenic upper Cuyahoga River in beautiful Geauga County. At Crooked River Adventures, we are open year-round seven days a week, and we rent kayaks, paddle boards, and canoes. Before or after your voyage, you can enjoy our restaurant with patio and bar, or you can bring your own picnic. Crooked River Adventures are perfect for school outings and for family bonding. For more information, visit crookedriveradventures.com.
said that he couldn't stand every moment he was in the car ball with the most arrogant. We're on. And welcome back. We are here at Defiance, and we are waiting a second half kickoff. Uh, the score right now is 28 to 7. I'm Doug Edwards. I'm here with Al, and we're, we're waiting a second half. Al, what do you think Defiance has to do to get back in this game? I, they see, certainly seem to be out of sync today. Yeah, I'd, I'd still like to see them um, kind of move the personnel around. Um, I'd give, I'd probably give up that off outside zone and that, and go more uh, off tackle and, and trap, and do some play action out of that, and uh, take their time to get their their uh, just to get their heads together and get on the page. You need something simple that's going to get everybody back on the same page, and uh, and I just don't see that. They seem like they're in a rush. One minute they want to pass, then they want to run. But then it's not the right type of run. When they want to run outside, it's like they uh, should be running more inside. I don't know. It just they're so out of sorts right now. But I, I think just let's get some nice, nice, easy plays and let's get downfield, take some time off the clock, and let's let's get some momentum going. Well, they certainly have the opportunity. I mean, they're going to get the ball this half. Uh, and the kick kickoffs are coming to them, and and they're certainly capable. They scored the, the last two games. They scored 50 points. So yeah. I can't believe that that uh, that Defiance is incapable of, of moving the ball. So now we're looking at um, kickoff coming. And we've got Defiance will be moving the ball from right to left on the, on the screen. What's up, Bill? And there's another little pooch kick. Oh, oh and he dropped the ball. Picked, picked it up, got it. And, oh. and a possible disaster, and who was that? <laughs> and there we go. It was that again. It's Andre, Andre Hill, uh, who has fielded several of those balls, and yeah. he picked it back up. Where again, we, we we look at Defiance starting with great field position. They're at the 47-yard line, uh, their own 47, and if they can get something going here, they can get back in the game. So we have Jordan Ambrose in the backfield. We have Tyshawn Freeman. We had a two by two set. Hand off to Freeman up the middle. And nice run there. Looks like he picked up about seven yards across the midfield. No, he picked up five. Okay, so we're across midfield. We're at the 47. Quick pass. Defense was not ready. Out to number that. six. And that's, that's Rome. And Tashawn Rome on the catch for a defiance first down. And they, they, that was a they, quick little play. Didn't wait, waste much time. Fake to. And now we have the ball down to the 34-yard 30, line. We have an injured Bluffton player down. I think he got hit in the head with a knee, yeah. but he's, he's back up. So number four, Headwood. Uh, looks like he may have his bell rung a bit. The receiver was looked like he was grabbing a shoulder blade, or shoulder blade is. Uh, uh, oh hell! <laughs> well, he was grabbing something. He was grabbing something up there in the shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ball at the 35-yard line of oh. collarbone. Of, of there, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so again, we have Ambrose back. We got two to the left. 
Nice run. Oh, nice run by wow. Deshaun Walker. Oh. And it's still going. Brought it down to the 21-yard line. Oh. Nice run inside. Just bowled his way through. Looked a fantastic ride. And kept his legs moving. And now it'll be first and 10. And looking at the 21-yard line. Three set to the left. Another one to Freeman. And this time kind of stopped after maybe one two-yard game maybe. So Bluffton came out. Bluffton. Oh my goodness. So it must be the purple in, the, in, the, in both uniforms. It's throwing me off here. Um, Defiance came out, and they've got a bit of pace right now. They're 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 not spending a lot of time between plays. Motion to the left. Quick little quick little screen. Ah, uh, the number twelve. That was to Desmond Garrett, but you know he tried to juke around there, and instead of going going straight forward, picking up a few yards, he kind of kind of lost yardage on that one. Sure did. Third and about what? got third and twelve. No. Oh. Third and about yeah. About twelve. Yeah. Run. He's, he's gonna go. Well, he's got down to about the 13 maybe. So Ambrose, Ambrose a bit short. Could have picked up the first down they hadn't lost yards that last time. Now, they're probably in fourth down, definitely in fourth down territory. I don't see them looking to, to kick. They're down by too much. And they brought a tight end in. Uh, Lakota. So we got about a fourth and three. Lakota hand and Walker and in comes free, Tayshawn Freeman again. And he's set off to the left of Ambrose. And they hand, they fake the hand out to Ambrose, but missed. no. But they stuffed it. Well, uh -oh. hey, well, let's see what's going on now. Okay. Yeah, they were they were definitely a lot of activity after the uh, that's what they all say, after the whistle. Wait, that, yeah, that's what they tell the judge. Yeah. So yeah, I gotta get it all wrong. This is this is college football. Here we go. Personal foul. That's buffed in. So on bluffed in number six is a personal foul. Unfort unfortunate for for Bluffton, but a, a, a big break a big break for a defiance. Uh, no, no, wait. Because it happened afterwards, so it's got to be Bluffton's ball. Well, oh, and then walk them back okay. 15. So it was af it was after the play was over. Oh, yeah. Okay. So Bluffton gets the ball, um, but they, then it will be marked marked off against them. Yeah, but did they move the ball back? Did they move the ball back? They're getting ready all? to. Oh, okay. I was gonna say. <laughs> And this reminds me of this might be the same crew as it when I was here last. And they were, uh, oh, not the. In that Mount St. Joseph game, after every play, they conferred. So, um, okay, so here we go. And Stoner gets the ball. And he moves the ball up maybe two yards. So, well, th so now. The ball is set at the, basically the 10 yard line. Well, we'll have to see what happens now because it, right now, Defiance to get back in the game needs to really stuff them here. Oh, look at that. Big loss on the play. 
Um, they're back. Yeah, they're, they're the same guy that got the sack earlier in the game. Yeah, ball was handed off to it looked like Payne, and he uh, he lost yardage. I think that that's a a, a fortunate spot there for uh, for Bluffton because I, he he got thrown down. He was very close to the goal line, so yeah. they have him on the like the three yard line now. But uh oh. Well, they pinned him in. I mean, they kept him from breaking and turning it up. So, so I thought he got more than a yard, but it shows yeah. him with a yard gain. What'll be interesting is, you know, um, Defiance has been close to blocking a couple of punts. Um, this might be the time to really just yeah. go after it. Yeah, this hill's at the edge, edge of the uh, end zone. I'd definitely go for it. So we have number 12 back for. They're coming. Oh, oh I think they got a hand on it. Yeah, but there's a two flags down. So we'll have to see what, what that, what the penalty is about. But that, that ball got shanked and, and uh, went out about the 27, 28 yard line. Yeah, that was uh, two of them got mixed up there at the 19-yard line. And uh, I think that's going to be against Bluffton. And while we're waiting for the officials to sort this out, here we have some additional scores here. Uh, in, in the top 25, we have number three, Michigan, 24, Penn State, 10. Alabama, number eight, Alabama, 48, 49 to 14 over Kentucky. Uh, we have Texas Tech 13, number 16, Kansas 7. We have Colorado 14, Arizona 7. And we're waiting to see what's happening. Oh. Uh, so the call was holding on Defiance. Wow. And the ball gets... Turned back over to Bluffton. I, I just, you know, I, I feel for Defiance because they, they seem to keep getting in their own way. Well, yeah. I, you know, they they had the ability to, there to be out in a good field position, and unfortunately the penalties are killing them today. All right. Oh, oh wait a minute. All right, so that's Defiance with the ball and Walker and and uh, Tayshawn Freeman carrying the ball. Freeman's a little bit upset about yeah. something there. He ripped his helmet off and he's got to come out. Right. Wow, look at the trips here stacked on this side. Uh, oh, they moved the ball up a little bit because it wasn't set where it was supposed to be. Yeah. All right, so second about a long nine. We have a trip stack on this side of the wall. On the far side, we have one out wide. Ambrose throws the ball to number 12. And in there. number 12 for the touchdown. That's number... Yeah. Jasmine Garrett, yeah. Garrett. Yeah. touchdown. So we now scored. So now we have a score of 28 for Bluffton and 13. We're waiting to kick. All right. So we're waiting to kick. Number 10. So Sanchez, kick is up, kick is good. So now with 8.55 left yeah. in the third quarter, we have, yeah. we have Bluffton 28 and Defiance 14. So now we have we have a bit of a ball game. We're going to see 
see what happens. Now, Def Defiance really needs to have a good defensive series here. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that, that score really kind of got them excited here. I'm not sure what uh, their DBs got confused for Bluffton because slot receiver or slot corner and the corner both stayed and left the safety with three guys. With three guys. There was a guy deep, a uh, guy intermediate was up, and a guy short. Well, they had that, that, that triple stack there. Uh, that uh, They seemed to not know who, who, who was covering who out yeah. of that. Okay, so we have Sanchez about ready to kick off the ball. Number six is back deep for that's um, Nigel Payne back deep for Bluffton. Here we go. There's the kick. Receives it about the 13 yard line. Payne's with the ball, makes a cut. And he's a fumble, and Bluffton has it. Oh, it's a game of it has wow. changed. The momentum has definitely changed here. Wow. Yeah. Yes. They are, they are changing. So, so Bluffton, Bluffton fumbles the ball. Bluffton, Bluffton fumbled the ball, recovered by Defiance. And here comes Defiance back on the field. And if they can get us a quick score here, we really will have a ball game. Okay, so we have we have Ambrose in the backfield along with Freeman. Hand off to Freeman. Turn. Running with a purpose. But brought down, brought down by, by a host of often uh, tacklers. And didn't get much. Didn't get much there. He did get a score at 24-17, uh, Michigan over Penn State. Michigan over to 17. Yes. Oh, so we just uh, so so Penn State just scored. We have Michigan 24 and Penn State 17. Yeah. And that guy hitched up where the linebacker came from. Mm -hmm. Unless there's an old plate pitch and catch with him on that one. So we have a third down with about seven to go here. Ball is on the 40-yard line of, of Bluffton. Yeah. That's, yeah, that slant's been open. Early in the second, it's open. And it, I mean, just go five yards and turn yeah. around and just give it to him. Let him run. Bluffton has not been hiding their blitzes at all. No. Back to Ambrose. Right there. Two under. Spent a lot of time. Pops it over. Gets it to. Gets it to. The, ooh, going to be close if it's a first down or not. Following the fourth down. It's about fourth down. It's about. It's, <laughs> yeah. The ball is at the 34 yards. Yeah, I was going to say, they don't draw up plays well. Like you used to back in the day, you could draw them up in the dirt and you knew exactly what the guy wanted. And here they come. Everybody stacked up at the line. Oh, yes, but that, that was a great run by Freeman to get the first down. The push push. If Jordan would have pulled it on that, they all yep. flapped yep. down on him. Sure did. Right. Taken off to the right side. So a first down for, for the Defiance the Yellow Jackets, and they are, the ball is now on the 32-yard line. Ambrose with with Freeman to the, the right. Pitch out to Freeman. He turns it wow. upfield. Rumble Rumbles and stumbles, doesn't he? But he, he ran that linebacker up, right over. He picked up about four. So we're looking at the ball at the 28-yard line. That was Josh Neuberger from Norwalk for uh, Bluff okay. that he just got run over. We got to this side, motion to towards us, take the Freeman, 
Garrett's got the ball. He's bouncing around and picks up. Where are they going to place it? Looks at the 24. It looks like the 24-yard line. Um, and that should bring up third and about three. Hand off to Freeman, cuts it back. There oh, there he goes, and run one through, broke through the line, and he's Touchdown. in for the score. Touchdown. Nice cutback. Yeah. Nice cutback by, by Deshaun Freeman. So now we are looking at 5.33 left in the third quarter. We have the score 28 to 20 with the, the extra point coming up. Uh, it looks like we have maybe a Bluffton player down out there as well. Yeah, we have, looks like we have an injured player out there. So the, uh, the the momentum certainly has shifted. We didn't think that we were, the way uh, <laughs> the way Defiance ended the, the first half. They seemed very flat. very flat. Yep. But uh, they have certainly come alive here in the second uh, the State second lost half. Penn State lost twenty four fifteen. And we have a final from uh, Happy Valley twenty four fifteen. Michigan over Penn State. So with Michigan, or I'm sorry, with the Big Ten adding these teams to the conference, I got a question. Is what happened to Penn State and Nebraska? I really thought instead of being a two-team rivalry thing going every year for football, right? it just seems, uh, you know, I was expecting – you know, one year, you know, we may, you know, as Ohio State may beat Michigan, but then, you know, they lose to Nebraska. There would always be somebody there. But it uh, hasn't really turned out, turned out that way. No, those those teams were perennial powers oh, before yeah. they came into the conference and, and uh, certainly have not lived up to the billing that they had prior to coming into the big yeah. game. Yeah. I'm wondering if that's going to be the same for the – for uh, USC and yeah, yeah, I, I I wonder about that myself. And they want Washington too. I know they they want Washington, and I keep hearing rumblings that they're trying to snatch Clemson. <laughs> and I well, really we're going to be well, on both many, coasts. <laughs> how many how many teams do you want in your conference? Do you want every team in the nation to be in the same conference? I, I think at some point in time you, you can't possibly play everybody this right. season. And here we go, and we're waiting for the kick. It's up, and it's good. good. So with 5.33 left in the third quarter here at the Defiance College, we have the Bluffton Beavers 28 and the Defiance Yellow Jackets 21. Defiance coming back and making a game out of it. So we'll be awaiting this kickoff by Zeke Sanchez. And again, back deep for back deep for Bluffton. It'll be number six. Nigel Payne. So a much different tone coming from the stand, the stands yeah. of Defi the Defiance fans now than what we were seeing at the first half. Everybody happy, to like to see what's happening with their team. There's the kick. Payne takes the ball about the 12. He's up over the 30, still coming. And looks like he got up to maybe almost the 40 yard line. Uh, well, it'll be at the 40, or the 39. Nope, 
Ball set on the right hash of the 40 yard line. Okay. So Riero back in for the quarterback at, at Bluffton. Snap, fake to, so they fake the ball to um, Stoner and pass out to, the 42 yard line. Well, ball's been moved up first down while the, the Defiance 42. Defiance, is, you know, some of those backs just keep playing way off and then Defiance is just curling right underneath them and then hand off to Stoner, trying to make the corner, hit there. Nice. Oh, stop pretty much a, a um, maybe a one yard game. These are updates now. Okay, so we have Mount Union 24 over Baltimore Wallace 10 in the fourth quarter. Muskegon and Marietta 7-7. Seven seven. And we have Ohio Northern 17, Wilmington 6. Those are the scores from the Ohio Athletic Conference. Um, second down and nine. And a quick pass out to, is that, that was number one, uh, Andre Price. Um, and he picked up about nine. So here we are. Have, uh, so we have third and one. And they're bringing stoners coming back in. Certainly looks like a, probably we'll try to pick up the first down with a, a run by stoner. We'll see. Hand off to stoner. And up he goes through the middle. And he picks up about six yards. A very easy first down for him. He's physical. Yeah, the, he's. You know, they they certainly are are I think concerned with the the pass first, the, the defensive line, and they seem to, to be coming in crashing pretty hard, and that makes it, it opens up lanes for a stoner. And stoner again with the ball, and uh, yeah. picks up about two or three. So. It appears that now Defiance wants the, cl the clock to run a lot more because you know the momentum has shifted a little bit, trying to slow things down, keep uh, keep that enthusiasm that Defiance has, just, has been building in the last off two offensive series to, to fizzle out. Fake. Oh, and there we got a sack. Yeah, that's number 42. 42 yeah. That's. Um, um, Richard Pope. Richard Pope. From Daytona yeah. Beach. Uh, Richard Pope, the uh, the linebacker, shooting in there and, and taking him down. Third or fourth sack. So. Oh, uh, now we have a third down at about 15. The ball's on the third eighth of the year. Line. His eighth sack of the year. Okay. Oh, okay. I thought he had, okay. Thought he had three today. He had so we now. have a two by two set. First half. Yes. Taking the backfield, there is a pitch, and right again, open. there it is. Uh, it, this has not changed since the beginning of the game. It's the same play being run over and over again, and yeah. they don't, they can't seem to stop it. Um, Safety's too deep. Oh, now flags. Yeah, safety's too far back. Corner's too far back. Nobody's yeah. in position. So it's against against Bluffton. No, it's against Bluffton. Yes. Hey, looky, we scored. You know, put the ball up the guy's face. And it was a, after after the play was over. So we're we're looking at uh, a dead ball. Oh. So they will assess this on the kickoff. Make it in today. We'll kick off right there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, they may change change how they're thinking on that uh, that particular kick. So we still have a lot of time here, and the kick is a little low, but it is over the crossbar and good. So now with 2:19 left in the third quarter, we have 
Uh, the score, 35 for the Bluffton Beavers and 21 for the Defiance Yellow Jackets. What's that? I didn't see the penalty. I just did not all right. So due to the penalty, due to the penalty, uh, Bluffton will be kicking off from the 20-yard line, looks like. 20. So <laughs> if, if they pooch, if they pooch kick it, they'll, they'll get the ball. He'll catch it at the 40. He's still screaming. If he gets any yardage on the turn. So we'll see. It, it, certainly good field position that, that appears to be coming in the way of, of the Yellow Jackets. There's the pooch kick. Don't let it hit the ground, guys. Oh, oh what are you doing? Ground. It's going to be taken by Bluffton. Oh, he almost squirted out of there. I'll tell you what. Move up and catch that ball. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so Defiance, Defiance blew the, that opportunity by letting the ball hit the ground and... Uh, I mean, it's a high, it's a high yeah. yeah. So unfortunately, they, they did not get the field position that they probably envisioned having here. But uh, they have the opportunity. They they are going to have to come up with um, the same type of thing they've been doing to move the ball previously in the last last two. I always thought it was funny. It reminded me of uh, Rock Farlow's thing too for his DBs and returners. They all had to play baseball. <clears throat> they knew how to field. Yep. No, how to field the get. All right, so there's a pitch out to Freeman. Oh, and wow. he, did, he, he hurls a guy. And he, Twinkle toes. He man. comes he through, and he picked up about and five. And yes, picked up about five yards on that one. <laughs> time, for, time for him to be uh, into the ball, I think, a little bit more. Uh, and it looks like Boston's were going to bring Bring some pressure. Fake. There's a deep uh -oh. pass. A oh, he dropped the ball. He dropped it. That was right the there. <laughs> wow. That was, you know, Ambrose put a nice touch of that ball at number 14. I had a kid named Tony, Hender Tony Henderley, and Tony could, he could outrun anybody. But yeah. if you would throw a deep pass to Tony Henderley, he would literally have too much Unfortunate, time to think about it. There. That was and there. He would drop yeah, it. That was right there. <laughs> Great kid. Well, yeah. That, that unfortunate for, uh, for Defiance. So here we go. Again, Ambrose back. There he is. He's going to sneak go, through. Go, go, go. He's got one go. guy to beat. Oh, just go. Now, the question is, he kind of fumbled the ball out of bounds there, and I don't know where they're going to mark it. I think they're going to mark it short. Short by a yard. So it's fourth and one, and it looks like they're kind of bringing out the punt team here. I don't, I don't know if I'd punt. I don't know if I'd punt either. I, I think I would give the ball to Freeman. Yeah. I, I, you're down by two scores. I mean, I, there is time, time left in the game. I just the, you don't want to give them a short field, yeah. but and fair catch. Okay, so with 57, almost 58 seconds left in the uh, the third quarter, we're looking at. Uh, Again, a 35 to 21 score. Yeah. Bluffton getting the ball on their 30. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what, I would be moving Pope around at defensive end, the tackle, whatever, to get him. Mm -hmm. They're just running away from him. All 
All right, so we have Rayero hands the ball off to he lost a half a yard. Number 25. Mm -hmm. Harris on the tackle. Okay. All right, so in the backfield we have we have Rayero and who's the running back there? 25. Yeah. Fake. Oh, oh hit. <laughs> Brought down by number 99. He um, Fernando. Fernando. Fernando Sabria ne Neves. So, and that's the end of the third quarter. So here at Defiance, we have a 35 to 21 score in favor of the Beavers of Bluffton. Well, it's second in the second half. Defiance has woke up. They they gave up that touchdown pass, but I would say that the, the defense is starting to apply itself. It's just uh, well, the, they got to make something happen now. Yeah, well, the, there's certainly though it, it's been the same play over and over. Yeah, it is. And 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 def and defiance has been unable to either get personnel to change or able to uh find a way of of defending that play and it's just killing them. Some of the there's just some missing adjustments. I mean, that post pattern they haven't taken away. And it was like on the on the kickoff that was inexcusable to let that ball roll uh, another 20 yards. Yeah, absolutely. Because that was a scoring opportunity right there mm -hmm. for him. Okay, so we've got uh, Bluffton with the ball. Uh, Rater Rareros gets the ball out. He's got it. To, out. Oh, oh, it was intended was for Behringer. Behringer again. Uh, it, I think Behringer seems to be his favorite target. Uh, yes, and, yes. And, and for, for good reason. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. But... Uh, so what a good defensive series that that time with uh, for Defiance. So and now fourth down, and uh, here here's where you just can't make special team errors on this. You get to catch that ball. They got Desmond. You can't make a de de and you can't make a stupid penalties, which uh, they have done a couple times in the game where where it's hurt them. It's hurt them. Uh, Desmond Garrett. Oh, it looks like it might have been tipped. And that's going to roll out at about the 34-yard line. Defiance will take over there. Well, that was close. I mean, they, <clears throat> they, so, may, they may have got a hand on it, but they didn't get much of it, much of it to really block it. No, they, it just deflected it a little bit, which maybe made it a little shorter, but it didn't ultimately uh, <clears throat> put them in the turnover category there. So 14:45 to go, 35 to 21, the Bluffton Beavers over the. Defiance Yellow Jackets. Uh, Defiance is taking over here, and I would say Doug here. You know, you figure you may have three times in a quarter. This 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 is a must do here. Yeah. They're going to have to get down and score. Okay, so they get it out. Looks as that Garrett again. I think it might be. Well, they they came out with a stack, a wide stack on both sides of the both sides of the, of the field there. Mm -hmm. And looking, <clears throat> looking for that like short little um, screen pass. Yeah, and that mm. was Sanjay Gibson actually caught that last one. And here we have a very similar um, set okay. as last so, time. Yeah, we got a two-man stack over on the right, and Amber. Ooh, mm. I'm gonna give him that because it was close, but uh, yeah, a little hitch pattern. Bluffton's defender got there a little early, but for overall, I would say, okay, we'll let that one slide. But that brings up third and six, and you can't have too many more of these. No. They're going to have to. <clears throat> I mean, if they're if it's fourth and short, you've got to you got to take those every time now. But uh, Dasman Garrett back in the game. Jordan Ambrose, two receivers to the left, one to the right. Freeman in the backfield. Ambrose play action. Oh, and he's got it to Desmond Garrett. 
And Garrett's going. And he's got, he could go he away. 20, 10, 5. Oh, my. Oh, I think they pushed him out. Of, oh, they, they, they called a score. I thought they pushed him out of the one. Correction, that was number 17, Sanjay Gibson. The 5'10", 170 pound sophomore. And all of a sudden, the Defiance crowd has woke up, Doug. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, they've been a lot happy. They've been a lot happier this half. <laughs> they've been a lot happier this half than yes, what they were yes. in the first half. So here we go. Kick by Sanchez. Oh, oh, didn't get it all. No. <laughs> <laughs> Zeke Sanchez misses the extra point. 35 27. I think he caught his cleat as he was going forward on that ball. Oh, oh that hurts. And with 14 minutes to go in the fourth quarter, 35 27. <laughs> that was very true. So eight points now with the miss of the extra point by Sanchez. And, wow, we've seen a little bit of everything today. Well, I, you know, Defiance certainly has a lot of momentum going this half. Yes. Uh, they're moving the ball, which was not something they were doing the first half at all. So, so uh, Well, they've had some explosive plays in the second half. Right. They didn't have any of those in the first half. Um, and, and Bluffton... I mean, I'd keep on going to the well on that post pattern. Oh, they haven't stopped it. Why would it? Why <laughs> yeah, would it? exactly. Uh, I mean, but. And if you want to silence the crowd, do it right on the first play here. Yeah, I would agree. I would you agree. know what? Silence the crowd. If you, get, if, if you hit it. Change the momentum. Yeah. Yeah, change the momentum. And so we're going to see here. But, um, wow, unbelievable. And there is the kickoff. And return, that's going to be um, that's Nigel. out to the 33. Yeah, that and that was, was uh, Nigel Payne on the return. Well, Payne, has, Payne has done a nice job on the, on the return game today. Um, yes, he has. He's uh, given them good field position. And, you know, this is uh, where uh, Rayero's got to – He's got to come right back and, you know, answer this. Well, and, it, and it's, it's, it's also, you know, this is at the time that, that the defense really needs to, to step up for defiance. I mean, they, they've done a, a good job this half. And that's Solero. And Solero, wow, big run by Solero out to about the 48-yard line, 47-yard line. And that's going to be a first down for Bluffton, and that kind of takes some of the momentum away. Right. And brought them, you know, and look, they're almost in midfield now. Yeah. So here we go. So Rayero gives it to Solero, and Solero, wow, slashes through about eight yards, seven yard run down to the Defiance 46. Now, and when you're when you're gaining that much yardage, that's going to open up that post pattern again because yes. they're going to start worrying about, about them gashing them. Yeah, and bring the safety down inside. and um, Okay, Rayero, two receivers to the left, one to the right, gives it to Solero, and Solero not this time so much, and that was uh, Richard Pope, the fourth, on that play. Well, Bluffton looking to run a little clock here right now. Yeah, you know? yeah. And, I, you know, I, I would – I don't know about that, Mark, to tell you the truth. I thought, uh, yeah, I they thought got a, they Pope got had him in the backfield. Yeah, they had a generous uh, spot there. Yes, they did. They may have actually taken the – I mean, they may have made a little bit of a loss, but he was well beyond, well behind the 45 when uh, when uh, Pope had got his hands on him. And I would say, well, I don't know that I, – And I think Pope – Pope came out off the field there. So yeah, the holding flies. his arm, yeah. yeah so that's, that yeah. could be a big loss. And he's had a big game. Yeah. So here here it is, Rayero with two receivers to the right. He's going to give it to Stoner. Stoner. And 
Well, Stoner does what he needs to do. Yeah. Gets down to the 37. It's going to be a new set of downs. Well, and it's what, what he's been doing all game. Yeah, you know, yeah. Picking up six or five or six every every carry. So, 12:21 to go. Fourth period, and we're looking at uh, first and ten from the Yellow Jacket 37. Pistol formation, and there's the body drops. Full, Rero and broken up. And it was t intended for pain, but um, knocked away by knocked away by number 24. He tried to thread that in there because it, he had three guys around him. Tyquez Douglas. Yeah. So we've got uh, two receivers to the right, one to the left. Stoner offset to Rieros, and they give to oh, Solero actually, and Solero. Oh, they, they, they chopped them down, so they, yeah, they didn't, get, didn't get going there. And that's number two that knifed in there to take him down. And that was Thomas Coltrane. Who else? So now we're looking at uh, third and about eight. Um, Big, big, player. big play for, for Defiance. Safety's right now. got to stay in the middle of the field on this. Right. Got to, got to, got to. Riero gives it to Solero, Solero and, and no, nothing there. Now, the uh, Defiance defense, a host of Defiance defenders. And I think he may have, looks like his hand possibly got hurt. Solero's walking off. No, he's, he's going to stay on. And uh, so now you've got, you know, you got fourth and six. Well, you're too far out to, to, to kick. Yeah. And chances are if you punt. It's going to go into the end yeah. zone. You're only so going to get wanna, about nine yards yeah, on the exchange. So. Okay, so fourth and six. From the Yellow Jacket, 33, Riero motions out. And then Riero looks. There's pressure. He gets it to the middle. Oh, did he intercept it's, the ball? Oh, it's intercepted by Defiance. He, he, not the NFL, but. <laughs> oh. Yeah, he's, well. Big play. Big play, big play. Bluffed and stepped up big on that. That was Cody Johnson, the 6'1", 250-pound freshman from uh, Pike High School in New Orleans. It's a little, oh. cold, a little, a little colder here. <laughs> okay, so from the 24-yard line of Defiance, Defiance yeah. got the ball, and they give to Freeman. Oh, look at him. Wow. Wow. <laughs> He just headbutted that boy. <laughs> Freeman on a just a physical three yard run there to just punish people in the process. <laughs> His helmet's gonna need a rest after the game. <laughs> okay. So Ambrose drops, looks, he gets out of the pocket. He go, could go, be go. gone. He go. will be gone here. And he gets well, we'll, well see. Maybe, maybe a little short. Right? Well, I think it's right at the marker. I, I was going to agree with you there, but it looks where his foot is. I think. Okay, well, we'll see what it flag. So probably a holding penalty. Uh, well, they're pointing towards the fine. Yeah. Must have been a hold. Yeah. And usually when scramble plays start like that. Yeah, it's, that's usually when it happens too. Right. Yeah. Okay, so uh, now second and 16, 10-10 ten, ten to go, well, zebras fourth quarter. <laughs> the Zebras in the, in the stands were certainly had an opinion about that call. <laughs> they did. There were stripes of different colors there, yes. I'll tell you that. Okay, so Ambrose gets ready, two receivers to the left, two to the right. They're in stack. Oh, and they, they give it to Freeman, and Freeman's open again. He's off and running. 
He's First to the down. 40. He's over to four. Oh, that's that's going to be a flag. flag. Oh, 15 God. more yards on top. <laughs> you know we're in a rivalry game here, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, you can tell. Some tempers are flaring right now. So at the 42 is where Freeman went out, but was ridden out by the Bluffton defender, and there's going to be 15 more added on to that. And uh, they're going to be into the Beaver territory now. That was a heck of a run, too. Uh, <laughs> that was a hell of a run there. He Okay. It was a wrap around, uh, a wrap around, uh, oh, a handoff. Yeah, yeah. They used to call that. Uh, Paul Brown called that the Cincinnati draw. So two to the right, one to the, well, two by two now. So Ambrose, play action, looks, looks, uh -oh. pops out to his left. Oh, that's going to be another one. Oh, I don't. <clears throat> yeah. Ah, oh, boy. I, I, you know, I, I gotta wonder if that was a horse collar yeah, on that. I, I, yeah, I thought the same thing, Bill. He, he came up along the head and and he grabbed him there, and it just. Is there a flag yet? I don't have to see the flag. No, there's no flag, but that should have been a flag. Well, I think. So I think what's going to happen here, Doug, is they're going to call the ball was out of bounds. There's not going to be a penalty. There should be a penalty. Yeah, but absolutely. that's how the officials are going to get out of this. Yeah, yeah. That was because that was just a flagrant. Uh, okay, we've got some scores here. Mountain Union 34, BW 17. We've got Hanover and an upset of Franklin 22 to three. We've got Heidelberg 24, Capital 7. Oh, Ohio Northern 27, Wilmington 7, Marietta 14, Muskingum 14, Mount St. Joe 54, Rose Holman 13, John Carroll 31, Otterbein 14. Wow. Okay. So they, uh, so they said he was out at the 45 yard line? Yeah. Second and 12. Okay. Well. Bad officiating all the way around on that. But anyhow, give to Freeman. Freeman slashes off the right side. He just powers through down to the 37-yard line. Well, he's woken up this half. Yeah, he's going to get that uh, 191 yards in one quarter the way he's going right now. So well, this is going to be a big, you know, this drive will be a big one because if they do score, then they're going to have to go for two just to get – game tied so yeah yeah they, they do have to score here They're... now a field goal would still do the same if they can get points and there's Freeman off to the left side he's over to 30 hurdles down to the 25 yard line what a run by Freeman on that. the senior the senior running back running man possessed yes this was the person that we, we, we thought we would see yes yes it just takes three quarters to warm up. Okay, three receivers to the right, one to the left. Ambrose with Freeman to his right. He gives the play action. Ooh. And that was intended for um, tight end Cole Wrecker. And that almost wrecked the uh, drive there. Almost. So second and ten, I just, you know, Doug, I, I know you talked about this in the pregame and uh, during the game, is Ambrose just, his speed adjustment on the throws is inconsistent. Right. And it's almost caught him a couple times here. Okay, so Freeman off to the right. They take Rucker from the right tight end over to the left. Ambrose drops a little screen play to Wrecker, and Wrecker's free! He's to the 25, and he goes down, only gains, wow, down to the 24. He gained one yard on that. It looked like he had broke out of it after they diagnosed the screen. 
So it's going to be third and ten still. Third and ten. But it could have been third and fifteen right there. So now they're going to have to. Uh, so I just think that you, you know you got to put a situation here for Ambrose to well, be. Well, it's pro it's two down territory, so they need to get about half of it. You know. Okay. It'd be nice to have more, but really that's okay. What here we go. Third and ten. Ambrose gets it out. Oh, oh my no! God. Oh, my oh, is that? The ball. Wow. Oh, that's 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 all you can say is wow. Wide open. And dropped the ball. Yeah, he's the uh, loneliest man on the field right now. So, okay, so let's take a look at some scores here. We've got Colorado 24, Arizona 17, Kansas State 21, Baylor 7, and UCF 7, Oklahoma State 0. Oklahoma State coming off the upset of the Oklahoma Sooners. Okay, so oh, timeout. Okay, so I, and I know that this is a little bit out the, outside the kicker's range, but if you did kick the field goal, you wouldn't have to worry about the two-point conversion. Right. So if they could get points here, they would still need to score a touchdown either way. But uh, looking at um, the long field goal for Sanchez, Sanchez's longest this year is 36 yards. So, yeah, this would be outside of his range. Well, especially after that last uh, extra point. Of course, point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 so, that was like a wounded quail. That's, that's, what, that's when you need those sound effects and that type of yeah. thing. Um, yeah, I, this, is, uh, this is big. This is big because, um, I mean, now you're looking at, the, you know, Bluffton getting the ball. If they don't move, they're going to take time off the clock. And yeah. then you've got to score. Right. And then get the two-point conversion. Right. So, well, you know, there's. Wow, what a what a crazy! It, this has been well. This has been good one, huh? Yes, this has been one of the better ones this year. I, yeah, I think that was Jelini Warren again that dropped that ball. Who is the same guy that dropped that deep pass there? He's just not had a had a good day today. Okay, three receivers to the left, two to the right. They're empty. They're gonna walk motion Freeman back into the backfield. There's Ambrose. He looks. He looks. He's go, got go, it. Go, go, go. Throw the ball. Wow. So I'm not sure what's going on right now. We know it looks like the ball was intercepted. There's a flag down, too. There's a penalty down. So now we have all kinds of things going over on oh, yeah. that far sideline. Yeah, line. yeah. So and, and th that would be... I mean, if they got it back to where the original line of scrimmage was, I mean. I, I, I think it's going to be a block on the run back. Yeah, I, I think that's where. You know, the, the sad part was. Oh, sideline warning on uh, Bluffed in there. Well, the, 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 you throw a flag for a warning? Uh, it, do they give you a, yes, they, they drop the flag, they give the warning the second time as a penalty. Okay. Ambrose, I think, could have gone, could have just talked and ran. I agree with you. I, I, you know, I, and I, he I, and I thought he was, I thought he was going to, and then all of a sudden he pulled up and. Well, I think the problem is, you know, in the NFL they said if you th if the man's open, you're throwing it too late because mm -hmm. you got to throw. And what happened to him is he saw him open, he stopped the throw, and then bluffed and recovered. So. Okay, so there's – oh, there was – they did mark it off, though. So, yeah. Bluffton's back to about the 14-yard line. Rayero's got uh, Stoner in the backfield, two to the right, one to the left. He gives it to Stoner. They're going to run some clock here, I would imagine. And uh, oh. six yards on first down. Uh, they were uh, – it didn't look like uh, Defiance was ready on that play. Yeah. I, I felt like they, they were still people shifting around and trying yeah. to figure out what, where they needed to be. It's going to be second and four here. And, uh, yeah, this is uh, – they got to get the mojo back here, so to speak. 
Yeah, they need to get themselves a a, a pick. A, 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 well, yes, but I mean they they definitely need to have a a, a play for no yard. Get the Stoner or, again, and Stoner. Okay, Ooh. so picked up maybe about a yard. So we're going to be looking at third and seven, I believe, or third and three. And uh, this is this is big because get the ball back. They have get, time now. Get I mean, the ball they still back. Have yeah. time. Yeah. And they they don't have to necessarily get it all back in one play. Right. Right. So. Uh, Bluffton, two to the right, one to the left. Rero puts Stoner off to his left, gets ready. They should, have a, they should be spying on Stoner. And we got a timeout, I believe, for Bluffton. You know, one thing we haven't seen, and I, I, I his, I think he had negative uh, rushing average was Rero as a runner. Mm -hmm. He's not taken off on anything. And... Uh, Okay, we're going to a commercial here. Defy the ordinary at Defiance College, a leader in STEM career training, science, technology, engineering, math with strong focus on hands-on research, internships, and field experience. Spend the summer conducting real research with faculty in fields like exercise physiology, water quality, data analytics, and much more. Personalized advising and mentorships for students pursuing health-related careers. Explore STEM and defy the ordinary at Defiance College. Yeah, they couldn't go for the post on this and break their back. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're back here. Rayero, Stoner, two to the right, one to the left, third and three. There's a little, no, and it's out of bounds. And okay, Defiance, so Defiance has a chance. Yeah, Defiance. 524 to go. And, you know, and again, uh, numerous times today, Defiance has been really close to blocking a punt. Good point. And and, and it, I think that I would be nervous if I were Bluffton right now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because they really haven't seemed to stop that, that rush that they've had. Right. And so we've got um, Michael, the kicker. Desmond Garrett back. Average is about 32 yards a kick. Oh, it goes out of the end zone. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> There's the two points. <laughs> oh, so bluff the or <laughs> defiance blocks the punt and it rolls out the back of the end zone, which is the two points they need. There needed. we go. And now Bluffton has a, a chance, chance to win the game. Or Defiance had a chance to go down and win the game. Wow. Assuming the cleat doesn't get caught in the carpet again. <laughs> <laughs> of course, at this point, overtime would be appropriate, you know. How many times have they came close to blocking it off? That's, that's what Doug, Doug was saying, that they had been there about three times already on that. So, what a momentum change. And, you know, that could be, that could take a lot of wind out of Bluffton sails right now. Now, here's what we got to do if we're defiant is we got to field the, the kick. ball. Yes. We got to field the kick. Well, this is a free kick, too. Yeah, I know. So, so it'll be a punt, so it'll be a easier. But we have not seen. No. We've, no, they've been a little bit hesitant. Yes. Uh, I think I would. They should, but that's if they catch the ball. They let it hit the ground. Well, I know. I know. They, they got to get some return people. Oh, they see it coming and go, oh, look, yeah, that would be, if I were the special teams coach, I'd be giving some specific instructions on catching the ball. And, you know, and one thing they need to realize, too, I don't know if people under, always understand this, this is a free ball just like a kickoff. Right. So, you know, if that ball is rolling around. Well, and who says you have to kick? Punt the ball like like a normal punt. I mean, you could kind of dribble it, try to dribble it down. And you could. So, so, but um, 
So I'm making sure I got my hands team out there. If you don't have hands over on the sideline, we're gonna get everybody out there and catch football. But uh, all right, well, now they have a teed up here, so. and I believe they're gonna probably pooch it over there. Is what it looks like to me at the moment. Oh, oh, and what do you know? For the first time, they really kind of booted the back. Got to get to the sideline. All right. Okay. Now we got a little, little chippiness going oh, on yeah. out there about the fifth or yeah. 35 yard yeah, line. They're, they're a little a, excited out there yeah. right now. Okay, we got some scores. Mountain Union 41, BW 17, John Carroll 30, Otterbein 14, Marietta 21, Muskingum 14, Ohio Northern 31, Wilmington 14, Heidelberg 31, Capital 14, and Mount St. Joseph 68, Rose Holman 13. They just score. Mount St. Joseph just, just scores and score points. Scores. Two by two set here. Give to Freeman. Freeman Cuts it breaks back. it up the middle. He's over to 50. Over to 45. Down to the 42. Wow. Wow. <laughs> what a second half he's had. He's just been abusing people out there. Okay, three receivers to the right, one to the left. Give to Freeman again. Freeman right up the middle. Just bulldozes over to 35 down to the 32-yard line. Wow. Okay, we got two receivers to the left, one to the right. Give to Freeman again. He's just ripping through there. Picks up another three or four yards. And that's a first down. If I, you know, I know momentum's going, but you might want to <laughs> slow it down a little bit. You don't want to give too much time to that uh, Bluffton offense. Oh, play action. There's he's got him. He's open. Oh, I think he got it. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. That is Shajar. That is unbelievable. Sanjay Gibson. Sanjay Gibson with a great catch. Red zone for the Yellow Jackets out there at the four yard line. First and goal, 4.06 to go in the game. Give to Freeman. Freeman slashes off the left side down to about the two yard He's got line. About a half, he got about a half of the distance that time. Yeah. So second and goal from the two. Now you can gear it down a little bit. Flag. Right here. Yeah. Sus suspect. I think they're deciding do they mark it off or leave it where it's at? You know, five yards, I'd say, you know, let the play run. Yeah. Probably more than half the distance. Don't tell me no. Okay. So. Yeah. <laughs> Half the distance, they're down to the one yard line here. <laughs> well, they're not sure. He took it one step and he went to move. Now he moved it again. He just moved back to the two. Let's call it even at the two. Jeez almighty. Okay. I told you about this last time. <laughs> yeah. Second, second goal from the two. And I think Mr. Freeman's number will probably get called here again. Oh, he's going under center. They could, okay. Rome in motion. Give to Freeman. Freeman's, oh, his helmet's over. I don't know if the ball's over. It's but. close. Now, this is good. This is good for defiance. Run that clock down so that when you. Third down and a half, maybe less than a half a yard. I don't know. Because I tell you what, Freeman Freeman's helmet was oh it's second down. I forgot about the penalty. Yeah. Okay. So second. Just keep, just keep pounding it. Second and goal. We're under three minutes now. Now you know I don't know if you're going to go under center, you might as well run quarterback sneak. If it were me. Okay. So they they've got a heavy formation. Oh, and they they give it to Ambrose. Ambrose, Ambrose on the quick pitch. But it, flag, probably a motion penalty, I bet. Legal motion. 
Yeah, I don't, I don't think that's going to be. So it's going to be a five-yard penalty on Defiance. It's going to make it second and goal from the six, though. Boy, that was a nice play, though. Yeah. Uh, I like that. They moved uh, Cole Wrecker to tight end, went in and took the snap, and then pitched it to uh, Ambrose. Ambrose. Yeah. yeah. Freeman was running in motion, and then when the quarterback took, him up, took a step before he got the ball, made two-minute motion. Couldn't do it. Okay. Okay, so here we go. All right, so, so we've got a second uh, down. Second down from the six. Ambrose with the ball. Yeah, Ambrose. He it's in. It's a touchdown. He's in. He's in. 30, 35, 35 with 239 to go. Now, well, now for the extra point. The extra point. And you know what I'm doing? I'm putting them in tennis shoes for this. <laughs> We're going to take the cleats. I'm going to take the, the wrench and get the cleats off there and go out there without the cleats. Okay, so we have Zeke Sanchez can put. <laughs> put after uh, being the, behind for the, you know, the, the, the first. 46 minutes of the game. Yeah. They can take their first lead. That's their last timeout. Oh, it's a timeout. I don't know if I'd have done that or not. Might have want that timeout. Mm -hmm. Or maybe Coach Sing, maybe we'll go for two. I don't know. Because it, it doesn't really make any difference. Well, it does. The kick should be easier. Yeah. And there is no two points doesn't do you any good. So. Well, I. I know what if if I were the defensive coordinator for Defiance, I know what play I'd be expecting to see sometime in the, in the last two minutes. I tell the safety to stand back on the goal line. It's, <laughs> nobody nobody gets behind you. Yeah, that post pattern it just is has killed Defiance all day long. So. We, we still have a game here, even if... I, I tell you what, you know, Xavier Rero, he can throw the ball. There's no doubt about mm -hmm. it. He showed why he's got 2,000 yards passing this year. All right, so here we are for Sanchez. It's, oh, my God! Oh, no! Oh, no! <laughs> Sanchez yanks the extra point again, and we're at 35-35 with 2.39 to go. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Rick, go ahead and say it. That's what Rick always says. Oh, well, it was looking like it there for a few minutes. So, hey, Defiance did it the hard way to get the two points through the safety. Right. And then the easy way didn't work. So this is this has been quite the game it's, today. It's been crazy. Okay, so here here's where if you're defiance, you can't have that little mental letdown. Right. Can't breathe yet because nothing's over. Yeah. Yeah. So. And there's still plenty of sunshine yet out there. Oh, there is no lights. I just I never realized that there's no lights on this field. <laughs> Called on account of a dark. We could see the third tie in the series. <laughs> so, and nobody. I wonder what they do. Do you get half the hammer? <laughs> One gets. They, they get two hammers. One gets the head of the hammer, the other gets the handle. <laughs> All right. Okay. Kick. It's, oh, that's that's uh, pain Nine. again. Pain is. No, it's a pain. Oh, pain has been a pain on these kickoff returns. Well, they got him down. Up. Okay. So I'll tell you, the officials kind of let for some like, big time wrestling going on wow, during uh, during the tackles when there's like a scrum and they let they're they're allowing. Some of this is their fault. Oh, absolutely. They they are not getting control of this very quickly. But and I think that's paying down. Yeah, yeah. Well, he gets slammed pretty hard. He's a little fella. I mean, 
Here's Payne's size. Payne is, he is 5'6", 145 pounds. Yeah. And he got swung around pretty well on that. So. Okay. So we are. Uh, but there have been a number, there have been actually a number of tackles like that where you kind of got into a scrum and you should have blown the whistle right. because there was no forward momentum. But you let it go. But on. you let it go until they, they, they brought the guy to the ground. I agree. I agree. You're lucky there hasn't been more serious injuries. But uh, so, you know, Bluffton now. Uh, looks like they're going to have the ball at about their 27, 28 yard line. 32. Oh, 32. And that was another, you know what? And that was another uh, nice return by Payne. He, he, Payne's had a good game. He definitely has. So. I think he's up on his feet now. But. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. They're kind of carrying him off. So that's not a, that's definitely not a good sign. Now. And that, that yeah. hurts them because he, he has been in on a few. Well, uh, he's also one of their top receivers, right. too. Right, that's what I'm saying. It hurts, it hurts the, them in terms of having another option out on the field yeah, to he go has, to. He has the highest yards per catch, although I would think that uh, Berenger would dispute that today. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> he, he's uh, he's definitely been out there. Okay, two-by-two two set. Rayero and the, uh, the gun. He drops. He looks. Oh, oh wide! Oh, why do you even step out of bounds? There was nobody I, I, within. I don't think he knew. There was okay. nobody. There was nobody within seven, eight yards of him. So that would make it second and about four. And yeah, two by two set again. Okay, there's the drop, and Riero. Oh, a little. Oh, oh no! Please got it. Oh, no. Lee's tackled down at about the 23-yard line. He's down. And Lee's down. But more importantly for Bluffton, though, they are now in field goal range. 2.05 to go. And, and then when we were talking about that, that, um, that timeout on that extra point, that's what I was alluding to is if this, something like this happens, you might need that extra point. Or that extra time out. Right. So, so um, Lee is down on the field, and we've got. Uh, so, guys, uh, we will see here how this finishes up. Of course, it doesn't mean that Defiance won't go right down the field right. and score, too. Right. If they do score. Um. And you know this is this is one of those. Uh, we'll bring get Al in here. Now, Al, do you remember a few years ago? Um, I think it was Florida let a team score because they knew with the situation they needed to have time to get the ball back. So they let they were playing somebody to let them score. They went up by two. Florida thought, okay, we're going to get the ball back. We'll go. To, you got a chance to score and win the game. It's a risk. Okay. Um, <coughs> what was that? Hand off to uh, Solero. Solero. He picked up about six. Oh, no, you know what? My bad. Karoma is his last name. I've been using his first name. Oh. Kar oh. Karoma on the carry. Our apologies. And they give it to him again, and he slashes off right side. He's short. Short, but... He's close. Yeah. So now the question is, and, of course, their kicking game is kind of suspect, too. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this is, okay, Rero is going to put, okay, gets under center. And it's a quarterback sneak, and they, and him, they got him. He's scrum. over. Yeah. The scrum just pushed him forward. First down. And this could uh, – you know, the irony of irony is that Bluffton lost by a field goal at their place last year. <laughs> and uh, I think they're looking to return the favor here. Well, I, Time is running out. I'm sure Bluffton would rather have the touchdown than the, the field goal. Though. Oh, yeah, I agree with you. And then, and Karoma 
There's a minute five, and you know, and Karoma's, yeah. uh, he's down to where about the seven yard line. We're under one minute, and outside of a turnover. So Karoma, Karoma gets the ball again, he bounces, and he is dropped for a loss. That's Coltrane that gets in there. Mm -hmm. And 40. Let's see who's coming in here. It looks like Stoner's coming in too. I think they're going to bring the bigger back in. Yeah, and it, which is the smart move here. But um, still got two timeouts. Okay, so who took the timeout though? I think I think Bluffton called the timeout. Okay, so that's going to give each team should be one because I think the, they were at two. But um, <laughs> so Defiance is going to need that that timeout. If they've got any chance to, no. of course, the field goal could go, you know. Well, yeah. We, we've seen all sorts of things with the kicking game today. So here we go. Bluffton is on the ball. They are ready to go. Third and four. Stoner is in the pistol formation. Two receivers to the right. And here's your ball game, ladies and gentlemen. It looks more like a... So, said I. and they give it to Stoner. Stoner slashes off the left side, and he is going to get into the end zone, it looks like. Oh, I think he's short. <laughs> oh, he's short, but that's going to. Okay, so yeah. Stoner's down to the one-yard line. First down and goal from the one. And they're running the clock, and they did not call a timeout. Oh, wait. Well, they should have. The clock should have stopped on the first down, though. They did stop it for a couple seconds. Okay. So, here is and then. Rarero. Oh, he's in. Okay. So 21.6 seconds left for Defiance. They're going to need a minor miracle on this one. Rick cursed him when he said overtime. Yeah. Yeah. We'll blame it on Rick. Okay, so Michael's in for the extra point. And it's, oh, oh, that's going to be offsides, but it doesn't matter. Kick is good. And so that's going to make it 42 35 in favor of Bluffton. And Bluffton would be getting their 50th win in the series if they win it today. Mm. So. Uh, if 21.6 seconds to go, and Defiance needs a little lightning in a bottle right now. They might get two offensive plays after the kickoff return. Well, it'll be interesting. I, you know, at this point, I would think that you'd want to kick the ball deep, which is something they haven't done all day, but... Well, uh, they should fair catch it so no time runs well, out. Well, that, that was my thinking uh, in terms of Defiance's viewpoint of it. Um, yeah. Again, they need to catch it. Yeah. Although this kid is, Michael has shown he can throw, he can kick, because on that uh, safety kick, he kicked it pretty deep. And what would be disastrous for defiance is if he is able to kick it over their head and it rolls down mm -hmm. you know and they end up recovering it down at the 10 yard line and so they, they really got to hope that they're able to you know and right now they're also f looking into the sun yeah which, so depending on you know the level the eye level of where the kick is yep. is because i'm looking at a lot of the defiance players with a hand up oh, oh, oh fair catch fair catch Oh, oh, no, no, no. Oh, that's a penalty. Oh, my God. He laid him out. Like, wow. The, 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 the defiance, defiance receiver was defenseless. As he signaled for the fair catch. And just so. Wow. Well, I, you know, the the. 
the officials have let a lot of things go today. Yes, they have. Yeah, they, they share blame in the, this, no doubt. Now, 15-yard penalty. That should be an ejection in my book. Well, the, you know, you it's a good point here that the, that could be an injection. That could be considered helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact <laughs> on that. Mm -hmm. It could be a targeting. Oof. So uh, he, is, he is down, and he may have been knocked out. Yep, I agree with you. And they should have ejected him. Yeah. It wasn't. It wasn't. They were saying target. That was intent to injure. It wasn't target. But, uh, it was, uh, wow. Yeah, but that doesn't matter, Joe, because they call targeting for targeting when it doesn't happen. So. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, ask Ohio State, Joey yeah. Boza. Oh, my God. <laughs> was it uh, – Game when he went and hit the guy here and they called it was like the quarterback ducked, they called him for targeting. Right, like, right. That's not targeting. No, because it's the kids. Targeting. You're not trying to hit him in the head. I, I agree. Targeting. Okay, so Defiance has got 21.6 seconds. Yeah. They have the ball on the 47 yard line of Bluffton. And wow. <laughs> it's been a crazy game. Only one timeout. And one timeout for Defiance. So um, they might be able to get three plays off. Could get three plays if they go sideline. Maybe, maybe get four. But they, it was, uh, you know, if you, it depends on how close you want to get right. to the end zone to take your shot at the end zone. Now, you know, you could go right to the end zone right now, try to catch them. Although they're not going to. Yeah, they're not going. They're not going to let you get behind them. Um, now you could take one shot in the middle of the field with your timeout. And then, you know, cut the field down in half, maybe. So, oof. looks like um, Andre Tibbs of um, Defiance, who was the player who f fielded the kickoff and didn't just got plowed over by the Bluffton player. And so, uh, this will be interesting to see what happens. Well, we will. Anytime you see a meeting of zebras on the field, well, it can't be a good thing. No. no. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, Defiance was lucky that the, the other guy came up and grabbed the ball. Oh, I know. I you know. know. Is it? I didn't see somebody. Did you see who was here? Oh, they're taking him off. Yeah. He's not one of the. I mean, he's a so Andre Tibbs, the backup defensive lineman for Defiance. Uh, Andre is a 6'3", 230-pound freshman from Lima, Ohio. Andre's up on his feet. They're going to walk him over onto the cart and dry, take him off. Cause yeah, at least he's, sit he's sitting up. He's in the passenger side, so. That's good. So Andre Tibbs, uh, I'm sure he's got a headache right now. Oof. He'll have a headache for a week. <laughs> yeah. Fortunately for for the Yellow Jackets and him, the season would be over and then have to worry about next week so right. he can recover. Okay, so here's your situation. Defiance with the ball on the Bluffton, 47, 21.6 seconds to go. Going with an empty backfield. We got an empty backfield, and we're going to see what Jordan Ambrose dials up. Again, with one timeout, they can take a shot to the middle of the field, and then possibly, okay, there you go. I think it was out of bounds. Okay, so they called that out of bounds, and that took about five seconds. So 16 seconds ago, that would have been a nice completion too. And that would have, yeah, would have got him closer. Yeah, yep. that should have been uh, that catch. Well, the ball, the ball was out, out too. I mean, he had to go for the ball. So here's where we go. 
Second down, 10 from 16 the seconds 47. left. And we got an umbrella coverage by Bluffton. And they get the ball out, and now they're running the clock. Yeah, take a timeout. They're, Bluffton will have to take a timeout. And Coach Nichols saying, hey, uh, we, we, you owe us a couple seconds there. Because he told him that he wanted the timeout at the end of that play. Should be a couple seconds put back on there, I would say. I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen. It's not going to happen. You could throw the end zone you got Indiana for take the plate, and you do have one more throw. But it's got to be a quick throw, not. Well, and the question is, is you know, do you shoot from the end zone where everybody's going to be standing back there? I mean, it's like a Hail Mary to you. You might be better off running a crossing route and then have somebody come underneath and catch it and pitch it back to them to see if. Because you're right, they're not going to be able to throw it over the top of them. So, hook and ball ladder. is on the, yeah, hook and, hook and ladder. Ball is on the 38 yard line of Bluffton, 7.5 seconds to go, and this could very well be the last play of the game unless. It's something to the sideline, and no, four point five seconds now, and they tried something to the sideline, and uh, so now it's going to come down to um, Ambrose push that ball again yep. instead of instead of throwing it. Throwing it. So here you go, four point five seconds, third down from the thirty-eight yard line. Yeah, he can't run it out of bounds. Well, they're bringing to Sean Freeman just uh, another option to just maybe something, get a, something to think about. Yeah. yeah. Could run a screen. Get it to Freeman and let him rumble and see if he can get it in. Okay, I think we're at delay a game. Oh, the referee came up and stood over the ball with Adam Hike. Wow, I don't know what happened there, but <laughs> the referee <laughs> ran up and over the ball. Oh boy. Well, the referee should have Okay, this will be the last play. It is from the 43 yard line of Bluffton. And this is your ball game here. 42 35, Bluffton. Ambrose oh, throws it air. up. It's going to have to go up in the air. No. Bluffton knocks it down. And that That's is your ball game. Penalty, hold it. Hold <coughs> oh, wait. Penalty. It could be roughing the passer. No. I, it's, and then we. It's a bluff. What did you say? Rick never agrees with me. Well, that you got to be kidding me. I mean, this is this is well, this is makeup situation here. So, so, so here we go with no time on the clock, and yet we're going to have one more play to play. Um, Look at that. So, 15 yard penalty. Puts it down to the 28 yard line of Bluffton. And this uh, this will be the last play. We know that, <laughs> unless there's a penalty. Untimed down. Uh, untimed down. So, this is, this is it. Unless Bluffton scores, and then they got to get the extra point. Bluffton, timeout. <laughs> No, Bluff, Bluffton called the timeout, not, not defiant. Yeah, we, oh we, we've, ta we've taken this last minute and extended it into a whole quarter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> these guys, are, these officials have really uh, lost, lost control. Lost control. Somewhere along the lines, we have lost control of this situation here. Holy moly. 
They could end up having a pass interference in the end zone or something. Well, they could. They, they could. could. Yeah. yeah. Well, guys, it's been a pleasure doing the college game of the week here. At least we ended up on a game like this, which was, which was nice. Game of the week became game of the month. It lasted. Uh, yeah, well, it's, it's, it's headed towards a month here. So, well, this has been uh, this has been fun. <laughs> yeah. it, 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 unusually fun in some ways. Uh, yeah. Now I'm a little surprised. I don't see. Oh, there he is. I had, last the last play. I didn't see Freeman out there. He may have been out there, but yeah. Uh, you know, well, I think he's going to be brought in probably for blocking purposes there. No, I understand that. I just thought maybe that, you know. Oh, it's. Wounded duck. Oh! 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 So the throw to the end zone goes incomplete. And so we have a 42 35 final. Bluffton gets the hammer back. And that is the 50th win in the series and the 99th game of the series. It was close. It was close. And uh, the action might not still be over as they're going to shake hands here. <laughs> so we, we will see. But um, yeah, these, uh, this, was a, this was definitely a, a rivalry game because the, 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 players were, the, the players were all out. Yeah, they were focused on this. And... Uh, and for Defiance, uh, assuming they're able to play next year, they'll have to wait 365 days to be able to get this done again. And uh, it'd be a shame if they don't get to play. Right. You no, know? no. It, it, uh, obviously, this is a game that means a lot to both teams. So Yeah. So. Okay, guys. So for Doug Edwards and Al Matthews, Joe Davis, Rick Phillips, I am – Bill the Razor Rayback, thank you for joining us this year on Campus Nation Game of the Week. Look forward for us to come back next year and stay tuned with us for Ohio State Club football. Tomorrow it will be from uh, East Lansing as the Ohio State Club football team takes on the Michigan State team uh, in the, I guess it would be the national quarterfinals. And if Ohio State wins, you may hear us next week possibly in Toledo for the semifinal of the club football national championship series. So again, our final score, Bluffton 42, Defiance 35. Good night, everyone.